Welcome back to Cruisin' with Steak. It's a grim steak here. And I got James Cruz with me also. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we'll get James this down. One of these days we'll figure this shit out. <laughs> I'm waiting so, for you to introduce me. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. I know one yeah, yeah, like the uh, the whole John the whole John and Adam on uh Magical Mystery <laughs> Radio. <laughs> yes. You didn't introduce us. We'll just argue. About it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So, on this wonderful podcast adventure, we had Dr. Rita Luis on with us, and that was, dude, it was an adventure. We're just, we're still going down that, uh, that Nephilim, Anunnaki, uh, ancient, per, ancient alien rabbit hole thing. It was yeah. fun, dude. We talked to, with her about a lot of stuff, though. Like, she's a clairvoyant, she, uh, she just, Psychic she's... Psychic readings. <laughs> she, she makes the circuit. She knows her knows her shit. It's a fun show. We had Jerry in there with us too. It's a good time. Yeah, yeah. She's awesome, man. She has a she's a mm-hmm. medical intuitive author speaker. Uh, man, you name it. Like uh, her site that she runs is called soulhealer.com dot com. You can find all of her info there. And yeah, it runs the gamut, dude. Like you were saying, like psychic readings, alternative healing ancient mysteries aliens ufos uh et conspiracy theory uh health and spirituality like yeah it's all mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. Yeah, that, written written a few books uh let's et chronicles uh what myth and legend have to say about human origin voiding the cosmic two by four dark angels and insiders guide to ghosts spirits and attached entities and the power within all that stuff you can find on her site but uh yeah what is that more importantly, we, more importantly we got to meet and hang out with dr rita it was awesome mm-hmm. yeah man it was In typical fashion it starts off uh everyone's hanging out on the you know we're all hanging out and uh off to the races man and off and, to the races yeah <laughs> Yeah, and like hey, you say, Jerry, time. Jerry's the best man. He's always great to have sit in on on some of these. Uh, mm-hmm. These, he, he, Jerry, Jerry's the sponge that I wish I had for a brain. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and and because he did every he retains everything, you know. Yeah. And, and that's how he's able to to have these bring up these great topics. And well, dude, he's probably, uh, he's probably slightly on the spectrum. You you have to be on the spectrum uh, yeah. to uh, to be a coder. <laughs> You know, so it's like you, you you pick things up like that. Well, we fucking love Jerry to death. Yeah, he was coming in from a remote location down in Florida, private bunker. Yes. Yep. Off the but, grid. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Jerry, man. It was awesome to have. Yeah. You thank you. Support. Yes, and thanks, Rita. I mean, that was that's good. So. Yeah, uh, it, a lot of fun. I yeah, man. I, I can't wait to hang out with her again. There, yeah, it's another thing. You like once you start diving down different rabbit holes, you know, you get to vibe on what people are into, and you could feel like things pulling one way or the other. And it's like, man, you could talk for hours on one thing, or talk for hours on a different thing. So, it'd be great to talk to some of the, some of these guests uh, multiple times, uh, for sure. Yep. Speaking of, if there's anybody you'd like to hear on the show, send us an email. We'll try to get them on. Or just send us an email. Nobody sends us fucking emails. <laughs> yeah. Oh, send hate, hate mail, love mail. Yeah, dude. We, just, we need some mail. Grimsteak at gmail.com. Send it in. Yeah. Mm-mm. Send it in. Uh, dude, I don't know. I'm not. We don't. I don't really got much. Nothing's really happened this week, man. Just been. <laughs> just been working. Uh, holidays are coming up, so that just means freaking hams and standing rib roasts and. <laughs> And just selling, dude, working. dude, exactly, dude. Holidays means I'm I'm working. I work so all you people can enjoy your holidays. Just remember that. Or when Thanks, you're enjoying bro. your cookouts this summer on the weekends, just remember that fucking butcher at the grocery store. He's suffering his ass off. 
for your fucking fun. <laughs> Say, go shake the dude's hand. Tell him, tell him you appreciate him. Your local meat man. <laughs> it's rough this time of year. You guys have, you guys have uh, uh, meat mountain. No, dude, that's Arby's. Get out of here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could get all the meats for a meat mountain, but. Exactly. Oh, that would be great. You could roll it all into one. <laughs> we could make that happen. <laughs> oh. That'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah, I I was just, we were talking a little bit ago, and I was, I, I, I've been on like a, a 24 hour Battlestar Galactica binge from like 12 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, it, if you go on Prime, it's on there, and I can't stop watching it, dude. Oh, I'm, I'm up to season three now. I just started. Don't spoil it. No spoilers. <laughs> Time to send all your spoilers. <laughs> there's, there's, there's any spoilers. It's just a great uh, binge series, man, for sure. Dude, and, I've... Uh, uh, Breaking Bad, both of them, back and forth. Yeah. Did you finish Breaking Bad yet? No, not yet. I'm, Dude, I, you're, I gotta, you're doubling down? You, oh, doubling. I see. I can't do that. I got to do one series at a time. Unless it's like something ridiculous. Like I've been watching... Uh, I've been watching One Piece. Uh, it's just an anime, but it's like one of the longest running animes ever. And there's like uh, 900, there's like 900 episodes on Hulu. And uh, dude, I just cleared episode 200 the other day and I'm like, oh, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. <laughs> like, I've watched 200 episodes of One Piece. This is out of control. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, how I am with this battle star. I, I feel like I'm part of the ship now and then I, 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 I'm, it might be I'm, I'm training my way to be a pilot mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff and right. all i just want to do is thank the gods and uh and frack everybody there you go man frack. i still haven't watched that but i'm sure our Battlestar galactica <laughs> listeners will understand that reference <laughs> i can't stop yeah. uh frack yeah, man. uh did you get any snow this week or that all uh, hit further bit. east yeah yeah just coldy, windy days. Yeah, dude, that's how it was um, today too, man. It sucks. I'm so, I'll be heading down uh, to Adam Oil Land in by the end of next week. So that'll oh, be yeah, awesome. going going down to Florida, huh? Oh, yeah, you Florida, said you'll be yeah. gone till the fifth. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we gotta book some shows. We gotta get book some, some shows. shows booked. Yeah, I'll do some show booking while I'm down there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man. I don't know. We got anything else, really? Nothing, nothing too uh, exciting. Click like, subscribe. Click like, subscribe. You're already listening. You're already listening. To hey, this leave us a right review now. on iTunes, please. Oh yeah, that's what you could do. Yeah, yeah man, we could use some I mean, of those. People that are listening already are listening, right? So it's hard to be like, uh, you know, find us here. Well, you already found us, so. Yeah, yeah, um, that is true. <laughs> you already have, found us. I do have a Facebook, you know, whatever. So just type in Cruising with Steak and you'll find all the stupid things that are linked to it. Mm-hmm. Groomsteak.com, yeah. you know, send us a donate, yeah. send us a, some love, send us an email, send us yeah. something. Let us know that you're listening. Even if you hate the show, let us know that you hate the show. Just tell us something. <laughs> if you want to be more involved, uh, Come into our Discord, out, and then you could just then yeah. you could just randomly pop in Zoom links like Adam Loyal has done right here. How you no. doing, Adam? <laughs> it's one of the great things about being in our Discord. You can become part of the show. Digital jizz over to cruising with steak with a donate. Yeah. <laughs> digital jizz. Adam Loyal, uh, what's the name of your podcast? FTK Friends to Know, which a new episode oh. just released right now, didn't it? Just released like probably 20 minutes ago. Yep. Yep. With uh, Adam. Oh, I can't fucking enunciate. Tarsus. Tarsus. There you go. Yeah. Our DM. Uh, that guy. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Jerry, Adam, myself, and Justin. It was a fucking awesome, fun episode. Hell yeah, man. And dude, dude hey, we did remote viewing again. Uh, I've heard there was some. Su- you did. Everybody yeah. I heard there was success. Nailed it. Dude, it, wow. was, it was amazing. Like so, like yeah, a pretty now, a pretty legitimate nailed it or was it like kind of a little like obscure like this kind of okay. works? Do you want me to tell you? I put in a little mech. I, I went to the dollar store and I got a, a keychain boxing glove, but it was a Mexican boxing glove. Okay, and both and uh, Jerry and Justin both wrote down glove. Ooh, so they were wow. thinking like more of like just a regular glove, but it was a boxing yeah. glove. And then I also put in there two things of Smarties. And Adam had individual candies or candy bar. Oh wow, oh. Well, that's so. Pretty I good. mean, it's like how that's how na- much closer are you gonna fucking get? Yeah, 
That's awesome. Yeah, that's nailing it. <laughs> yeah, because we yeah. we were. It kind of relates to even in this episode we talked about remote viewing with Doctor Rita Louise. And Dude, I just did uh, Ren's remote viewing too. You guys, I know I gotta that? do that. Uh, I gotta do tonight, that. Yeah. Dude, do it because tomorrow midnight yeah. Central. That's time the deadline. The dun, dun, the deadline. Dun, dun, dun. How did you do yours, Adam? Did you uh, record it or did you just do draw some pictures and take pictures of it and send no, it back I to just, him? I like, uh, drew some pictures. There was too much sound going on here. So what I've done in the past is I'll go onto YouTube and I'll pick 10 hours of fan sounds. Oh, uh, just <laughs> some white noise fans, almost? Like right. fan fan sound. Yeah. yeah, and uh, AMR. And then I, I, I tune it to my headset. I put that on. I turn um, all the lights off in my room. And then I dim the monitor and because he sent out a zip file with, mm -hmm. you know, the target, I just <laughs> kind of focused on that and then closed my eyes and then just tried to sketch out stuff. Right. Yeah. It was just chatting. And then, was I, and then I sent him the pictures. Yeah. I also sent him a description because I also had a song that I couldn't get out of my head and a couple of thoughts nice, um, man. before I started. So I kind of encapsulated all that and it just took pictures of the papers that I drew. So then you just kind of free draw when you do this, that's, you just, that's you how just I did put it. the yeah, pencil yeah, down and whatever happens. Because well, I see, like when I close my eyes, I see stuff. Like I see yeah. shapes and images, right. and I just try to draw what I'm interpreting. Very cool. You could even feel things, right? Like so, if you're feeling uh, hot, cold, round, that's how I got the circles. That's how I got stuff like that. Circles. What's a circle? Circles. The circles. Steve Urkel drawing a circle. Oh man, Steve Urkel yeah. drawing a circle. I like that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, yes, are yes. we recording right now? Yes, yes we yes. are. So we'll that just, uh, yeah, man. This this uh, this Zoom's filling up right now. Max here, Nomad's this Zoom here. Is filling so up. we'll uh, we'll wrap this intro up so we could do some <laughs> hanging out. So <laughs> otherwise, it's just going to turn into cruising with D and D. Yeah, yeah, it will, yeah. and then our intro will be two and a half hours, and it'll be very disrespectful <laughs> to Doctor Rita Louise. Like <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Long shows are the way to go, guys. Long <laughs> shows are the way to go. Thank you, Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, and we did, yeah. Actually, this was was like a it was a little over two hours. We did it was, with, it was a two hour one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, so cool. Shout outs to uh, Grimerica. Shout mm -hmm. out to them fools. Yep, uh, Sir Felix. I don't. We never mentioned him, so we have to make sure you know to mention Felix Cliff Wall Keanu. Yeah, <laughs> Keanu. Know? Yeah, <laughs> all of the above. Uh, friends to know. Um, Ascended Minds. And if you want to hear about Grimstake's awesome tattoo, uh, very end of Friends to Know tonight, you'll get to hear it right, right from his mouth. Oh. oh, I like it. I don't know what that means, but I'll take it. <laughs> so yeah, there uh, you go. Grim will take it. Yeah, you know I will. Yeah, um, check out, uh, let's see who else. So, yeah, yeah, that's about it, dude. We don't want to send them to too many shows, then they'll stop listening to ours. So <laughs> we'll just do that. Ah uh, yeah, that's all right. Well, yeah, but love and light yeah. to you guys. Love you all. Enjoy yeah, love the you chats. All. Thank you very much for listening. Find us on uh yeah. Type in just find us. C R U Z I N. Yeah. <laughs> Plug it up. Uh, yes. Find that stuff. Uh, share, like, subscribe, subscribe, rate, rate, donate. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good Enjoy times. the chat with Doctor Rita Louise. Peace be with you. Thanks for tuning in to Cruising with Steak. Well, let's uh looks like uh, all the audio's all checking out good. So uh welcome to Cruising with Steak. Rita, Dr. Rita Louise, we have on the show with us tonight. So I just want to let you know that, you know, my interviews come complete with sound effects. Trains, awesome. cars, dogs. <laughs> that is Lightning, awesome. If there that's happening. We don't have cicada bugs right now, so we're safe there. Uh, <laughs> are you are you in the northeast? I am in Texas. Texas. Oh, okay. Last last year I'm in Atlanta. Last year was um was cicadas for us. Oh, I have them every year and they're loud and my office I mean, I live in a really old house. It's like 100 years old, and there's a sleep porch, which is basically a room with windows. And so my office is in a room with 10 windows. Yeah. And so, you know, all you get is all the noise. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Nice. Well, those the, the cicadas, are, they're on that seven-year cycle, aren't they? But, like, it's kind of crazy how there's different batches of them that pop up. Like, I, I don't quite understand cicadas. Yeah. 
every year. And they're huge and noisy. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, I'm oh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying I'm up in Cleveland, up in Ohio. I mean, we have, you know, here and there we get some crazy bugs. We get the, those, um, those mayflies and like those, you know, they, they come off the lake and then they stick to your house and then they just die. That's all they do. <laughs> That's all they do. Um, and they're huge. They're like an inch. Yeah, yeah they're huge. <laughs> Yeah, but it's just kind of like a. But do you have June bugs? No, I do. Not, no and stink bugs too. June All bugs are my favorite bugs. because yeah. they're in the dumbest bug. It's like, wait, I'm on my back. I'm on my back. I can't get up. It's like slow motion, right? With the hands. <laughs> and um, well, when I was in Chicago, we had Japanese beetles. That was a yeah, yeah the, the special traps for them, mm-hmm. which mm. always smelled really nice. I wanted to put it in my room. <laughs> it didn't smell. It was, I don't even remember what they, they used to lure them, but it was some kind of uh, floral scent. Yeah. Well, hopefully it was a pleasant floral scent. Yeah, it was so nice. I wanted to put it in my room, like as oh, an okay. air freshener. So I thought you were like being facetious. No, <laughs> no I was serious. That's how good it smelled. It was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> no but yeah i uh yeah uh, let's see well we'll kind of get into this yeah i'm james i contacted you i found you through the uh independent research society through uh jeffrey boyd jr mm-hmm. and i yeah so i kind of put that out the one day and we were you know trying to take a dive into history a little bit and learn about some stuff that typically like i don't i mean i I'm, as i i'm known over the years we've all been in the the ufo conspiracy round you know for 20 years you know but like the whole nephilim thing you know i think that kind of came out you know like with the whole ancient aliens you know Mm -hmm. when that whole show started you know Mm -hmm. whatever 10 years ago or something but i think it was in the bible before then (laughs) oh yeah if you want to make it down like that (laughs) no but yeah so i bet like i'm talking to jeffrey i'm like who can we get man and then bam bam you know i'm I'm getting then you reached out and i'm so grateful man and then i'm going over some of your work which is ridiculous yeah uh (laughs) first of all your 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 uh your your site it's soulhealer.com right Mm -hmm. yeah well one of them yeah one of them yeah but I mean, you're into psychic readings, alternative healing, ancient mysteries, aliens, UFOs, ETs, conspiracy theory, health and spirituality. <laughs> I mean, it, it keeps, yeah, it just keeps going. All that you can find on our YouTube channel also. Yeah. And just, I mean, like, I'm blown away. I don't even know where to start. Like, I've as I'm like, I'm like thinking, I'm like, yeah, I want to talk Nephilim for sure. But there's like a million other things we can go down. It, <laughs> it's going to be fun. I hope you got some time. <laughs> I do. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. We'll have to work the secret space program into that. Yeah. We can morph it all into somehow. So let's start in the past. Like let's go. Yeah. Let's start there then. You know, like I just kind of, as I'm, a, as I'm a, I'm, as I go back to what we should have learned in the classrooms as what, what I kind of, you know, take teach it us, Dr. Rita. Teach yeah. Us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it all go wrong? I don't know. It was the apple. No. <laughs> it really, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but isn't that just a metaphor? Right. <laughs> Kinda. Yeah. Kinda. No, so like, um, yeah, just the um, the truth about the, le- the Nephilim, I get, you know, like where, where, where things can get mixed up sometimes and what it really means or how it was depicted. And, and, I- yeah. I have an idea. How about give us a, a family hierarchy? Because I was never sure where the, the Nephilim fit in with the Elohim and the Anunnaki and where does it all mix up and what's the same? Well, you know, I approach the whole Nephilim topic in a very different way than most people touch it. And so <laughs> I kind of am an outlier um, in the whole topic. I mean, my experience or my background in ancient mysteries is really looking at the mythology, you know, and what does myths have to say, and then relaying that back to people. And so when you talk about the Nephilim, you know, many people make the commentary that the Nephilim were the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of men. But 
when you read what the text in the Bible says, it says, in those days, the Nephilim walked the earth. Then the sons of God mated with the daughters of men and the offspring were the Gaborim. Yeah. And so that's the statement. But if you start looking at myth outside of the Bible, you know, because I always take the Bible and put it over there and go, well, what does everybody else have to say? And then how does that work in with what the Bible narrative says? If you look at Greek mythology, for example, they talk about the giants, the earth born. The titans. <clears throat> yeah. No. no. Not the titans. No. The titans oh. are the, the titans. Uh, those would They're, be... Demigods, right? Those are, yeah, yeah. Oh yes. man, we got to start at the beginning. <laughs> yes, Guys, teach us. With, so in <laughs> that's what I said. I'm in. I'm in grade school. I'm trying to. I'm, I need to be. <laughs> you need to read my book, ET Chronicles. You'd know everything. <laughs> yeah. <what's the> <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got burned. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so in mythology, there were actually two sets of giants. There were the Titans, who were the original gods. So which was like Kronos and, uh, all right, having a little uh, bit of a uh, word here. But Jupiter. Kronos, no, because Jupiter is Zeus oh, and he wasn't a Titan. Right, Zeus. Zeus was not uh, a Titan? He was not Kronos. a Titan. I don't know who else other than Kronos. I thought those were all, uh, like Kronos and Zeus were at the same level. No, Kronos was actually Ju Zeus's father. And so Zeus had a battle with Kronos, which is, you know, like the Battle of the Titans. Killed him with a and, lightning bolt, right? And Zeus won, mm -hmm. and that's why the godhood is actually in the sky, because Zeus was a sky god, and the Titans got sent to the Tartarus, to hell. And so that was one group of gods, but they were the more ancient gods. So in the godhood, there were the progenitor gods, who were the mm -hmm. ones who came to the earth. And so that was uh, Uranus. Uranus and Rhea or Gaia, and there was mm -hmm. a group of eight. And so they had children and they were the Titans. And so we had like the Cyclops were a Titan, uh, the Herkimers, which had 50 heads and 50 arms or 50 arms. They were the, monst the, the monsters were the monsters, <laughs> you know, the chimeras. And, so, and so that was this, the, their children. And so then when you get into Zeus, that was actually Kronos's child. Right. And, so and his kids were the, like Hercules and such. Or not Hercules, but his yeah, analog. Right. And so so that was one group of giants was the Titans. But they're described as being taller than trees and bigger than a mountain. So they were gigantic. So I don't know if you've ever seen that giant footprint that Michael Tellinger has promoted. The wall. It looks like it's about five foot tall. Mm -hmm. And it's like in the side of a mountain. Yeah. It's like, a, and, yeah. You know, and so that would be more of a footstep of one of these Titans. And then we have the Earthborn. And so according to Greek myth, uh, when Kronos, all right, Kronos castrated his father, Uranus. And yeah. so from the blood of the castrated Uranus, the Earthborn were formed. And so these were the giants. And these are the ones that are identified as being eight to 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall. So these are the ones that uh, like Goliath would be more of that category of giant. And so when you start looking at myth, there were these giants, you know, that you hear they find skulls and bodies all around the place, you know, that are 10 feet tall, nine, 10 feet tall. It's that group. And so if you read myth, you know, like even in the Ramayana, I mean, it, it's culture. All the cultures talk about this group of giants that were on the planet. So Are those the, the redheaded giants, the same ones? I would the, think so. Yes. Okay, okay. I would make that correlation. So if you read the narrative again, it says in those days, the Nephilim walked the earth. Well, if the Nephilim means earth born, which is the giants. Yes. The giants walked on the. Duh. We're earth born. But we're not in that same category as that giant group. Sure. Right. Um, but if you listen, read that statement again, it says, mm -hmm. in those days, the giants walk the earth. And so it's more giving a timeline and talking about populations on the planet, you know. And so, yes, the giants walk the earth. And then the next line is, and then the sons of God mated with the daughters of men and their offspring were the Gaborim. 
And so that's where you start getting into your characters like Hercules and Perseus and Hunamai, which is out of Indian cosmology, it's your demigods. Yeah. And that's where that group came in. Well, there's no documentation or any literature that talked about Hercules being a giant or Perseus being a giant. They just had super abilities and right. were men of renown. You know, their names have lived on in history because of their achievements and the additional capabilities that they had because their their father or mother were gods. So that's um, my take on the Nephilim, right? <laughs> which goes against pretty much everybody. So, which ones were they in there? <laughs> all of them? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah, all these. Which which set of those people would you consider Nephilim? So the the Nephilim were the giants. They were the we're ones the that were oh, born okay. of the blood of the castrated Uranus. Okay, or I got from you. Native American cosmology, and I can't remember which god it was. Um, she threw down 1,600 flint knives to, uh, onto the earth, and a race of men came into being, and these guys were giants. And so there's the car- parallel and corresponding story of the creation of a humanoid species on the earth prior to the formation of man. Because if you read pretty much any of the text, Sumerian or Greek or Indian, it's like humanity was created because the giants didn't want to do the work anymore and they revolted. <laughs> you know, so you have to have a race of giants before you can have the sons of God, or the daughters of man because man didn't even exist when the giants were on the earth. That's, I was going to say that. So the, the Nephilim were here long before man would have been here. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Correct. Um, where would like, uh, well, I don't know if it has correlation would come up and with it yet, but the, like the whole Anunnaki, like Nephilim, you know, like that whole type. Um, okay. So if we came from space, (laughs) well, and I'm just trying to think of the way. So if you read like the Enuma Elish or, and I can't remember the, I think it's the Epic of Arathis. It talks about the Ajiji, and they were doing all of these labors, and they yeah. revolted against the gods. And so my correlation is that that group that revolted against the gods, which was why they created man, you know, that mm-hmm. parallel narrative, that's why they created man. That would be the tie to uh, Sumerian cosmology and the whole Anunnaki idea. <laughs> Which I guess I would relate to giants being in that that region, you know, that whole desert area, you know. That uh, I don't know. I mean, I I don't know if the whole Nephilim would have been like worldwide. I bet they're finding giant bones. I would imagine, right? Well, you yeah. know, it's interesting, yeah. and and I have absolutely uh-huh. like zero proof yeah. of any of this. Mm-hmm. Um, but it has been speculated by some friends of mine, and I don't necessarily disagree, that the primary home of the giants, the Nephilim, was actually uh, the continental, like, North and South America. Oh, because that's, right. you know, because when the Native Americans came here or the Asians came here or whatever, it was a pretty pristine land, mm-hmm. you know, and there were pockets of giants, but I think that they had been pretty much eliminated you know, which would account for things like Serpent Mound. I was just going to say that. Yes, yeah, the mound you know, and, and burial mounds. like And yeah. the burial mounds that yeah. the Native Americans say they, we didn't make. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting. And that's all like a lot of those with the whole alignments of those mounds correlate with like how a lot of just all huge structures across the world are built. You know, it's like they're all. Yeah, well, go ahead, Jerry. Go ahead. No, no. I was speaking of constellations and patterns. Did you see what was floating on Reddit today about the the Austin bombing? Have made the pattern <laughs> of the Lyra constellation. No, I did not see that. <laughs> not kidding. Jeez. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, off the rails. <laughs> well, yeah. But, things no, there's star constellations. Is my point. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of similarities, though, just with everything. All the all the structures built around. 
Well, I mean, one of the things that I talk about in my book, E.T. Chronicles, is that based on the descriptions that they give of the different gods, the way it appears is that there was a group of gods, you know, so there was a sky God, there was a fertility God, and they were kind and there was the God of the underworld. And then in some cultures, there's actually four groups. There's the gods that are the master builders. And so depending on which culture you look at, there are either three primary groups of gods or four. But when you start looking at the way they're described, it sounds like they're talking about the same person over and over and over again. And so it's my belief that we had one group and they spread their teachings and they spread their information, their science, their astronomy to the different groups around the around the planet. You know, and that's why there are so many parallels, because if I'm your teacher and you go to my school, you're going to learn the way I do things versus Mm -hmm. if you go to somebody else's school, you're going to learn a different way of doing things. Well, I don't know. left a bunch of assholes in charge when they took off. (laughs) Yeah, the the Anunnaki? Anyone, whoever they left in charge, screwed it up. They screwed the pooch for sure. Yeah. Well, I think that humanity has taken it and uh, bastardized it and Mm -hmm. put their agenda on it. And, you know, but we don't really know what the the gods, I like to say the gods, agenda really was, you know. It's it's very possible, too, that they were anthropomorphized, whatever that word. (laughs) Anthropomorphized? Yeah. words uh, elements elements of the you know earth wind fire air that, that over time it's possibilities that some of those gods grew that way you know the corn spirit i mean there are those deities hmm. corn spirit porn spirits for example corn or you know the winter the harvest oh the harvest spirits and the, but I think that that was just a derivation to kind of break things up. And, you know, there's, when I look at stuff, I try to look at the most ancient material. Yeah. And so you don't find corn spirits and this spirit and that spirit back in that cos- cosmological setting. Mm-hmm. You know, no, not, so not back that, that far. Not, as you start bringing stuff forward, it's, it's like, you know, there, there's a spirit for everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, in an animistic world, that would be true. Mm-hmm. And and they all lived in an animistic world. Yeah. So there is spirit in everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even your iPhone. Even your you iPhone, know, yes. You know, I'm finishing up a book that I haven't quite decided 100% on the title, but the most current working title is mm-hmm. Stepping Out of Eden. And... Um, Goose well, stepping kind of, out of Eden. That's what it should be called. Goose stepping? Yeah. <laughs> of the fascist society that's upon us right now. But I'm sorry. Well, and one of the things that it talks about is how things were and and basically how we've been programmed over time, you know, to being who we are today and not really paying attention to where we came from. Mm-hmm. You know, and yeah. and it seems like we were in a lot better place when we were living in an animistic society versus now there's this total separation between us and nature, you know, and as I wrote in the book, and the plants and animals be damned. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of I think there's a lot of ways to look at that. Um, you've got the religions who are trying to separate you from that area of magic if you want to look at it that way because they want their rituals and their their ceremonies to be prominent and you to put all your energy into them mm-hmm. not to nature right which on some grander and level may, and what and, and, the, and my coin of, co- of course yeah. but that of course that's mm-hmm. just another form of energy <laughs> mm-hmm. i had no. a deeper point there but i forgot what it was <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's okay. Yeah. I had another point before, and it's just like when <laughs> I know it'll come back. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, that's true. It's, um, 
Oh God, I don't remember what it, I'm trying to remember what it was now because it was interesting. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'll stop interrupting. So, where do the reptilians come into all this? I know they have to at okay. some point. <laughs> okay, so you know every all right. Could you guys keep saying Anunnaki? See another point well, where I differ from a lot of people because people run around and go, "Oh, the Anunnaki, you Anunnaki." Right. You know, yeah. see, this is where you know it's bad that it's not video because then they'd see me being like, "Oh, the Anunnaki." <laughs> <laughs> but I just captured it. and I'm going to make a GIF of it. <laughs> Thanks. I don't have any makeup on. I got no, that. No. You look yeah. gorgeous. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> seriously, I mean, I just, uh, it's a title. It's uh, for those who from the sky came, right? It's basically the translation. Right. right. But, so when could, you, but when you look at the descriptions of the gods, we have the sky gods who Zeus was one of, and he and his group appear to be Caucasian individuals. That's the sky right, gods. The they live in hair. the sky. Right. Mm -hmm. Then we have the fertility gods. And they're traditionally described as being half man, half snake, or half man, some reptilian fish type creature who lives in beneath the waters. Mm. Dogons. Yes, they would Ooh. be part of that group. Mm -hmm. um, That's the Pledge know? group. The Vatican. <laughs> That's their worship area. Well, that's a totally separate conversation. <laughs> I know. That's a lot. <laughs> that's a big conversation. You know? uh, and, and so then the other two groups are the gods of the underworld, which there's really not any depictions. Yeah, what would that be? Yeah. Um, Hades, there are some Hades? people yeah. that speculate that um, it was actually controlled by the Syrians, you know, because the few images, because everybody knew about the god of the underworld, and, but everyone was afraid of them. And so no one really talked about him. He's not praised. He's not <laughs> sung to. There aren't narratives about him. It's like Voldemort. We don't speak his name. He was, That's right. He was, he was but demonized. everybody knew who he was. And so, you know, the few depictions that we have is like Osiris, you know, has a right. whitish blue tint. And mm. Shiva, again, blue. blue. Yeah. You know, so that would be kind of that tie. And then the last group are the god of treasures, the master builders, and they're usually depicted as being some kind of distorted monster character. Uh, the dwarfs, the giants, um, oh, the elves, the hobbits, the, the orcs, elves, yeah, the, all, all of that. The Middle all Earth stuff. Of, right. Kind of falls Tolkien. into that category. So the reptilians would Dragons. be fertility gods. Fertility gods. Hmm. Sure. But the fertility cack. gods are the ones that were responsible for the creation and education of humanity. So Enki was a fertility god. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Do you know Robert Stanley? Do you work the work of Robert Stanley? No, I'm not. Um, okay. He equates, just another point of view, he equates Enki with Lucifer. The same character. Well, and I can understand if you get rid of the four tier system and take it down to a three tier system, mm -hmm. the fertility gods end up being relegated to the god of the underworld. So he would be classified as the guy down there. But isn't that that's also Venus? What's well, you the know, they always sit there and talk about, you know, uh, the victor writes history yeah you know and so the sky gods the sky gods your zeus type character won the war mm. over chronos and so who wrote the story where did chronos and his buddies get sent they got sent to Saturn. Tartarus, which is no they got sent to hell <laughs> that's, you know, the, and, that's and the so, alter alternative narrative though you know and so if your fertility gods are these half men half reptilian type characters and they got sent to the depths of the earth to live there for a thousand years mm -hmm. then the lucifer story is a real easy step mm -hmm. you know, I, I agree to from that narrative i think i i was i don't remember who was whose research i was listening to i think it was jan Irwin or someone in his camp t tracing it might have been joe atwell i don't recall they were they had traced Lucifer back to an old king, actually the name, and they thought maybe it'd come because he was a really think think Vlad Tapish type, you know, of mm -hmm. guy. But that 
it was similar to Lucifer and they pulled that name back or they traced it back to become Lucifer. You know, but but I I can see where they would take that character, you know, and assign it to. Absolutely. That could go both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, but. You know, according to some people, you know, it it was Enki and I'm sorry, this comes out of the Sumerian material. Right. It was Enki that warned Zuhadra, however you say his name, Noah, Mm -hmm. you know, read hut, read hut, you know, you need to, you know, deal with this issue that's going on. And so it was always these reptilian characters that were protecting and supporting people, you know, Prometheus, another fertility God. He was, he was a Titan, um, gave humanity fire. One of the oldest and most consistent myths we have on the world around the world is the gods giving us fire. And, um, and he was punished because of his acts. And so it seems like this fertility God character is always tied to being a trickster or going against the will of the other gods, you know? And so he just has a bad rap. Right. Well, it's but the was whole, he you really know. evil? That's the question that I keep asking. Was he really evil? It depends on what you just, what you believe fire to be. Well, you know, I, I was interviewing David Icke and I tried to get him into a whole conversation about this topic because it's something I've battled with is were they bad? You know, was giving us an education a bad thing? And and his commentary was, well, by teaching us stuff, by giving us fire, by giving us tools to use, by educating us in any way it made it so that we became more dependent and it made it so that they can control us better. It put us more into that. uh, That's his view or your view? That's his view. Oh, I don't believe that at all. Well, you know, I don't look at it that way. If we weren't given any kind of education, we would still be monkey like. Uh, mm, Yeah, I agree with that. Right. Okay. I'm saying though, the, the terminology is bad. First of all, education Prometheus did not give out education. He gave people knowledge. He gave humans knowledge. Same, same to me. Education is indoctrination. What do they talk about like this mass? Mo- and that's why David mass, has that viewpoint. That mass download of consciousness from like uh, Neanderthal to, mo- well, uh, brain size, you know, like uh, capabilities of man. When, when, this, when the code was rewritten somehow or, or you know. No, the Neanderthals were an offshoot. Yeah, they were just a parallel species, you know, but we could interbreed with Neanderthals and we could interbreed with Devoni. Devasoni? Yeah, them. Uh, (laughs) You know, and so, you know, they keep trying to say, oh, well, you know, they were a different species, but they weren't a different species. They were just, you know, like the spotted tooth human yeah. versus the <laughs> upright tooth. white human you know right. <laughs> uh, a human with the white fur on his the, the white fur back mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i've always thought of back, back going back to the fire because i i asked that question about what the fire is because i've always thought of it as passion and spark maybe even the soul and that's what the gods were made mad about because Prometheus gave humanity spirit, a mm. fire, which led you, to them understanding more and gave them knowledge. I mean, it was a, a seed. But if you start looking at myth around the world, that myth is extremely consistent. It is as consistent, although it's just a one-liner in most groups Mm -hmm. as the flood story which is the most consistent myth you find around the world except the story of fire is older you know and i'm going to interject i'm going to interrupt my my own line of thought you know i find it interesting because people run around and go oh well the aliens were here forty thousand years ago or the aliens were here a hundred thousand years ago and i'm like no if the gods gave us fire as myth clearly suggests then they were here interfering in the development of humanity like one and a half million years ago. 
So we need to like push that date way back because mm-hmm. as I would like to say, you know, we were using fire to warm our houses clearly a hundred thousand years ago. Mm-hmm. And it, as far as archeologists and anthropologists can tell it, it was developed then or, or discovered then. Correct. Because uh, the, the, it, it, it led to cooking, which led to larger brains, yada, yada, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that was kind of the spark. This going back to Grimm's question that, or James's rather, that's what sparked the the now the brain size increase. So, so you, you don't think that there was a certain amount of genetic engineering that happened between uh, oh, uh, Homo erectus on. and modern man or Australopithecus? I really well, can't consider. Homo erectus. I really can't consider the Anunnaki slash mythology side of it without considering the the science take on it, you know, the scientism beliefs on what evolution or path the humans took. So I look at both equally. Maybe um, we uh, could have gotten genetically engineered. And then with that, we started cooking could have happened at the same time. Coincided. Well, amazingly, a lot of people who claim to know have this knowledge, which I don't know where they get it from, but say that, uh, that, that humans were genetically engineered with not from, monkeys not from primates uh primarily some of the genes were added in but it was from some other creature well what was it the anunnaki thing was like there you you, a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of clay a little bit yeah their story was they they made humans to (laughs) slaves mine gold yeah yeah. the first ones they made were but that's uh, the story yeah that's right, right, right right i know i know it's hokey i know it's a story. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Which I could find no evidence for. Just saying. Uh, I hey, find I, no I, evidence for the gold. Yeah, I yeah. saw the handshakes, okay? I get it. That's why I like... Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, the... Well, I, yeah. What, you, what you know, you're putting... You know, you're pointing at is like this fact-based research, you know, like compared to, the you know, the, the woo factor of... Uh, <laughs> they came from the sky. Yeah, but uh, but actually, uh, if you look at probably like some early, pieces and parts of it might be mixed in with that, but you know, but if you look at uh, Australopithecines that were using some pretty crude rock tools, yeah. and then the next iteration of hominid was Homo erectus, you know, within a one million or two million year window, we went from living in caves to, you know, or being very primitive hominids to losing our body hair, uh, living in social groups, being able to control fire, a huge advance in tool use, wearing clothes. I mean, there's this whole list of sanctuary cities. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But there's a whole list of features that, that you find with Homo erectus that you don't find in earlier groups and even scientists are unaware or can't figure out how such a huge change could happen in such a short period of time. Well, that's the whole missing link theory, isn't it? That they can't find why that, uh, where that change was like, so I mean, well, who knows? Unless, unless we were educated. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That fills in that gap right there. It could be I mean, you know, I always position. ask the question, why would we decide to wear clothes? Yeah, it's true. It seems more inconvenient. Like, why Why did we develop that shame? It doesn't Probably make sense. because we offended somebody. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, really, unless someone tells you to put something on or suggests you do. Why mm-hmm. would yeah. Or unless the weather changed. The weather changed. I mean, I can see it. Yeah, for warmth. Change. Yeah. That'd be the only reason. Warm, warm stuff. And I would look to some natives like uh, in the Amazon places like that, they usually do not wear clothes. Mm-hmm. Well, but it's just in pockets, <clears throat> you know, but for the most part, people wear clothes. I mean, there's just so much stuff that you have to sit there and start factoring in and, and asking a lot of questions as to why would we even wear clothes in the first place? Now I can understand you would need them for warmth, you know, you know, 
if the theory of that we moved out of Africa is true, or even Australia, because there's some very hot areas in Australia, you know, but if we were transiting, you know, you would need to have something warm to wear. So that I get. Native Americans in South America was all, all came over the Bering Straits, according to science. So, I mean, those people had to have something warm. Well, you know, but then you sit there and look at some of the things in South America, in Peru in particular, and I'm trying to think, I think it's the gourd that, uh, or the sweet potato. It's one of the crops that they have that actually came from the, like the Philippines, something like that. It was a Southwest Pacific food stuff that they can't figure out how it got there because it wasn't a plant that was native to that culture. And so they have a belief that there was a certain population that actually came across the ocean Mm -hmm. and populated the Peru area. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm sure there was a seafaring nation way earlier than we thought. You know, that just goes back to the whole, the mound builders and the pyramids and how it's kind of all the same, the same uh, stuff. There was fire and then there was a boat. Yeah, there Carmen you go. Bolter, <laughs> Carmen Bolter, the Egyptologist, have mm-hmm. you seen her? She's talked about um, the Egyptians or who we consider the Egyptians to be the seafaring race that taught people how to build pyramids all over the place. I mean, there's, so there's got to be somebody. Sarcophagi and Egyptian treasure in Turkey. It was a year ago when I saw it. So like a year or two ago, they found this stuff that was Egyptian stuff. It could have been pilfered, but it looked like she was saying that it was it was there. It was supposed to be there because it was it was that place of stuff, you know, mm-hmm. or the mm-hmm. peoples that live there. So that's kind of interesting. That could be something true or not true. It could be. Another I story. Mean, it just what? makes me wonder if the pyramids that are in actually in Egypt, the straight sided pyramids, were as Chris Dunn says, you know, some kind of of machine yeah. that is way more ancient than anybody wants to give it credit, you know, and like there is a gold plate picture that I saw that was from the Father Crespi collection, or I was interviewing uh, Klaus Donna, and there are these little sculptures of pyramids that are straight-sided, and, and which were found in South America. And so, but the only straight-sided pyramids that you find are in Egypt. Mm-hmm. And so my commentary is, well, were these other ones that we find around the world just cheap knockoffs because we couldn't build a straight sided pyramid anywhere else? Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not really yeah. straight sided. Just thought, you know. Well, I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of jagged if you get up close. It's not yeah. smooth. But the line down casing is missing. This yeah, is true. Yeah. This yeah. is true. But isn't that just an accent added at the end? Well, but if it was a machine, the limestone would be an insulator for some yeah. kind of an electrical mm. property happening on the inside. I have heard that. Some kind of water I pump it could that. have been, possibly. Or... Uh, Do you think? I think Joseph Farrell used to, was talking about um, in the King's Chamber or the Queen's Chamber, whichever one is empty, um, there were crystals in there, like piezoelectric crystals. And if, apparently if if the stars aligned and they did some put water through, I don't remember, maybe it was sound or frequency. It would, I would think it would be sound. Yeah. Be sound. That, yeah. The, it just resonates in those. It would resonate. Vibrations. And then the, oh. the crystals would do something. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it could be a machine. I hmm? Yeah. I, I, I haven't heard about what they would possibly do, but you know, I, I have, <laughs> well, I, um, many, many years ago, I worked as a electromechanical designer and I worked for a company that made microwave repeaters. And so you talk on your cell phone and they have these boxes on the towers mm-hmm. that amplify the signal and send it on. And they were, it was really interesting because it was an electric line in, but then it became this very mechanical thing where, to be honest with you, I don't even understand how they worked. I don't even understand how they worked because they would send an electrical signal in and then it would go through these pipes that were certain sizes that would create a certain frequency and then it would exit out the other side at an amped frequency and a, a very specific frequency because different cell phone companies are at different frequencies, blah, 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 blah. 
And what was interesting is, you know, when the I was hearing people starting to talk about that the uh, pyramids might have been a machine, images of these repeater boxes came into my mind because you would have like a thin tube that would go out into a big tube or some kind of a chamber and it would have these other little things coming off the side. And I was like, that's the pyramid. (laughs) Wouldn't that be cool? Uh Do you think that was for like this, these ley lined mass communication type things? I don't know. Or or power maybe. Maybe. I wonder if it'd be power. It's Possibly. fun to speculate. Frequent, yeah, yeah it, it's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, the New Agers have co-opted it, and, and it used to be some kind of healing generator. Like, it, it, yeah, it kept, it's it kept the ley lines un undamaged. I guess they were like a. It was like a giant power thing. Plus, apparently, it was a connection. Our connection to the stars or to our to Orion, according to them. Well. It was basically a frequency resonator, and if you right. got near it, you would resonate in that frequency, which was a healing frequency. Well, and I'm going to give them a little bit of prop, okay, because there are stories and cave systems in mountains, you know, like uh, Bosnian Pyramid. You know, yep. they say if you go into the chambers there that, you know, people have gotten well. There are mountains yeah. in, in Japan, I think it was Japan or China, Japan or China that also were identified as having healing properties, the same thing in the UK. But what's interesting is that that property is always tied to a mountain and the pyramids are kind of like artificial mountains, you know? So I don't take that off the table, except one of the things, and I asked like Carmen Boldere, I've asked so many people and no one will really just answer my question is, When they found the pyramids, however many, you know, in the 1800s when the French were there or when the British were there, why did they have to drill up, you know, blow a hole in the side? Weren't there already openings that they could get in because they had been looted? Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, it's like so. Maybe they were under the sand? No Hmm. one will answer that question. I mean, Nobody knows, were, maybe. well, either they were open or not, but you would think that if they found an opening under the sand, that that would be documented somewhere that, you know, oh, you know, they got in and they followed this thing and it's like, oh, there's an opening over here. <laughs> it could be that they don't feel that they've explored it fully and they don't want to give away how to get in for looters. Maybe we've never heard about the chamber underneath between the Sphinx and the pyramids, there's allegedly a chamber down there. Well, but I think part of that speaking. was the whole Zahi Hawass cover yeah, up thing that guy. going on. You know, I mean, I heard stories that you couldn't get into the King's chamber because they were doing construction in there because they were, <laughs> you know, trying to get in through those, those openings to it figure out what in. was behind the little metal plate when they yeah. sent the little tracker up into oh, yeah. Tunnels. To that channel, yeah. God, I remember that. It was well, very doing those, uh, anticlimactic. Those new scans, and they found that that extra chamber, I think, kind of above that area. It was kind of up to the with, top. With what, a LIDAR scan? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The where, where they put the, the metal plates in the bottom, and they're sending cosmic, well, like it measures cosmic rays passing through. I swear, I bet if we yeah. dig down, like, <laughs> I don't know, a couple thousand, couple two, three kilometers into the sand there, we'll find some... Really oh, man. Yeah. Like t- <laughs> teleporters and laser <laughs> yeah. We'll find the Stargate. Yeah, yeah it's, it's there. The Stargate's in... Uh, it's in, in Abydos. <laughs> it's in Iraq. It's in Iraq. Stargate's in your head. Maybe. <laughs> Stargate oh, is in your heart. Your heart? Like there that. you go. Yeah. Actually, uh, and well, I... You know, like, uh, I was going to mention, you know, oh. you know Nassim Harriman then, right? With the whole Resident Frequency Foundation, you know? I mean, I, never, I know who he is. I he, haven't really followed his... Yeah, history. well, you t- well, just on the, the, the Egypt aspect of things and that whole King's Chamber, yeah, it's all harmonic-based frequency inside there. You, you're like, I think you're pretty spot on with what you're, you're talking about with this healing idea of... Because they, they, he takes like many people do they phone groups and they go over there Mm -hmm. every year and people go in and there and they're experiencing just extraordinary things that that happen in there and 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 their group they were allowed to stay in there for 
hours and hours and they were doing that's like meditation all this stuff and like i mean i and yeah all of them now they're all targeted individuals probably yeah Yeah, but i'm still going to go back to my (laughs) question before is but if there wasn't an opening in there and why they they blow it out blow blew the side open then it's broke. It wasn't, it wasn't, it, it, they weren't using it for healing back in the day. Uh, well, nobody could get in. That's true. Which, hmm. or it was a fixed thing that just worked. No one had to get in. You could just be around it. Maybe. Around yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. That's, that's kind and of what I passed it along the ley lines. Yeah. There. Well, it, I, don't know what ley, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what ley lines they're on. Um, yeah, I don't know. either. And I'm the ley sure. line, whole ley line thing is very nebulous. You don't really true. It could be hard. just like anything. Uh, if you if you if you take this star here and you move it over here, then it lines up to here. You know, it could be anything. Like I don't, you know, oh, that's, no, no, they it's say energy. That's, it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, it's energy. Fair. Yeah. But. Although they have found a bunch of channels and underground features around the pyramids. Um, you know, and there are some that speculate that it actually was kind of like an almost like an island that the Giza Plateau was actually, you know, surrounded by water. And so there was this giant water feature, which the healing energy could have been transmitted through. Oh, that's it was. kind of pretty amazing because we were talking to Jeffrey and we were looking at these uh, these li- these LIDAR scans of Chichen Itza. And if you and and you yeah you see cheats in each which is like really small but then you and as the scans panned out I mean it was miles and miles around the whole thing with the crazy computer grid like well it looked like a circuit chip like of would have been un- would have been underground and if water's passing through these things acting like a conductor you know yeah well, it's more than that the water yeah. moving in a certain pattern will generate a certain frequency and a right. field of energy. <laughs> So, There's so around the whole, that. yeah, yeah, the ground penetrating radar stuff. Yeah, we're showing all these cavern, uh, this cavernistic systems. I what if these, what if these devices and channels and all this stuff made it, you know, resonated a frequency which manifested the Garden of Eden? You know, what if that's what powered it? What if that's what made this place Eden like, so to speak? And the corruption has buried them, which makes it the opposite. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Can I have 24 hours to ponder that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, one good but, question. But actually, 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 I got an answer for you. <laughs> All right. You know, if you read myth, those stories are filled with the evil awful things that the gods did and we think that there was this you know like paradise on earth but you know whether the gods are extraterrestrial or not it's like we act more like them than we act like people that are moral and honest and Mm -hmm. don't want to steal and kill each other which just seems to get worse and worse every day you know, but there's, you know, they're constantly fighting wars in the narratives that you find. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's this one story of Enlil raping this one girl and he gets, you know, like kicked out and all of this stuff. But, you know, but it's identified as him raping her. Um, and, and this is just the stories that they tell. You know, they're always fighting and vying for power. And we do the same thing. Although... We have laws and we have morals and we have the Ten Commandments that we're supposed to live by, which we obviously can't do. I'm not a Christian. Well, I'm not saying you know, a <laughs> no, Christian. I'm, te- I'm, te- I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> no, I know. It's it's re- right. It's it's permeated society. It's. Uh... Oh, I remember what I was going to say before. I couldn't remember what it was. Okay. Um, Ra, Ra, the sun god, uh, and the Egyptian gods themselves, they're analogs for something. They're not, I don't think that they're actually separate entities from probably the Greek gods. See, and I have, I don't, I have not studied the Egyptian gods Hmm. to infinite to 
a lot. Not, How's that? Obviously not all of them, but well, the major and, and, figures. You know, but when you sit there and you look at Egyptian cosmology, it kind of depends on what period you're looking at, who is the god in charge, and what is the cosmology tied to it. And so, and it's very challenging to figure out, or I haven't figured out, how's that? I haven't figured out mm -hmm. how to separate out this is the oldest myth base, and this is stuff that has derived because this god was repackaged as this god when this group over here kind of took over control. And so we have 3,000 years of kind of a mess. And no one has really, from a mythological perspective, timelined it. You know, right, this right. is the oldest cosmic, you know, sampling. And then this changed into this when the power moved over here. And then this became this. And it's so... To There's me, no way to know I anymore, I don't think. Yeah. There's no way we can know. We can't. I, I mean, think if somebody sat down and I mean, it would, it would, be, it would be a project. So maybe if we had access to the Vatican Library, we could figure it out. <laughs> and speak about fifty <laughs> languages. Yes. Yeah, really. <laughs> I'm working on my Aramaic. I'm really. <laughs> oh, no, I just had this. I've had this thought for a while that the monotheism brought in the age of patriarchy pretty much right we're mm. in my mind it did. okay okay <laughs> in egypt i mean i think i think there was a major shift in thought there when that happened so i think i've always considered that some kind of coup and because of all the the gods around uh the osiris time you know with set and all i can't think of them all isis and etc my Egyptian mythology is not that good either, but they just all seem for, like analogs of the Greek gods. And I was had this thought maybe the Greeks conquered Egypt and took over. Well, they did, yeah. but not until Alexander the Great time. Mm -hmm. Right, but what if it was more of a um, infiltration early on? And that's I mean, very possible, mm -hmm. you know. That I mean, because there's not really far from Greece to Egypt, and so there could easily have been you know, trade and thought that was moving from one mm -hmm. area to the other. Maybe, maybe it just could be that, that they got introduced to the Greek pantheon and incorporated into their own. Mm -hmm. Or they all just mm -hmm. met at Gobekli Tepe and they all shared ideas. I was just gonna say, yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> you know? it. Let's say, what are your thoughts on Gobekli Tepe? Wasn't Ra though a bird-headed yeah. god? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, uh, I know Osiris was. <clears throat> uh, Maybe. Or was he a dog? He, but he was an animal. He was an animal person. Well, they all were animal people. Yeah. Right. Which were the chimeras of the, chimeras. the Titans, not the Titans well, kids. There, I read a book. It was by uh, Bradford and Hillary. See, if I'm really lucky, it's just sitting right there on my desk, but it's not. Um, but it was a book about the Sands people. And so he actually has worked with them for so long that he dances ritual dance with them and goes into trance with them. That's awesome. And so one of the things that they talk about is when they're in this ecstatic state that reality distorts. And so the, the parallel, the parallel that he makes is that you can have a man with an animal head, or you can have a man's head with an animal's body, or you can have, a God appear as just an animal or a God appear as a man, you know? And so he believes that the imagery that we see in Egypt are actually their representations from their interaction with these beings in an ecstatic state. Mm, okay. You haven't done shrooms. I see. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I have. I'm, oh, I'm, you I'm, have. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. No. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you got to take that heroic dose and start talking well, to know, them. In, in the new book that I'm letting um, releasing, it's like that's one of the questions that I put out there is, you know, there are people that say that the gods, you know, the ancient aliens were physical beings. And then you have these individuals that go into a static state 
and interact with the spiritual beings that are potentially the gods. So I'm just going to kind of leave that one a little bit generic. Yeah. Um, Entities. They're entities, you know, but the question the, where I put the question mark is gods, question mark, mm-hmm. you know, but they have provided people with information and insights about themselves and what to do. And, you know, that whole ecstatic experience, which I'm not going to doubt, you know, and I'm not going to argue against. But when people sit there and talk about the gods in general, it has to be an all or nothing thing. They're either immaterial and non-corporeal beings or they're ancient aliens. And I put out, well, why couldn't they be both? Because the descriptions we have of many of the gods from deep antiquity was that they had physical form. They flew around in chariots. They had weapons. It's like, you don't hear about the gods flying in chariots in a story that people are in an ecstatic state. You know, they're not like shooting each other up and have weapons that can emit lightning you know you don't have those stories that come out of the ecstatic state so could it be possible that at some point in time we did experience these individuals who were here that were ancient aliens in addition we are still in communication with these non-corporeal beings whoever they are they might be fred the janitor we don't know they might be aspects of our consciousness too that as well I mean, I always joke around, you know, it's Fred, the janitor from Zeta Reticuli that is communicating all of this very heavy and it's yeah. to me. It's, it's one alien, like, pranking the whole planet, right? That's it. Yeah. He's just reading the Akashic records. And Could be. It's, it's a bunch of kids making prank everybody. calls. And he didn't even graduate high school. No. He's <laughs> just in a library. Yeah. <laughs> On the oh, free computers. Yeah. Good, good Fred hunting, right? <laughs> good Fred hunting. <laughs> That's good. Oh, yes. man. <laughs> so if this whole like uh, time frame of this, you know, like this, you think it'd be like the 12,000 year ago type mark, you know, of humanity and. Uh, oh, no, man. This is long ago. No, I mean, but like this. Uh, well, uh, well, I don't know if that would have been the the. Are you, uh, are you trying to tie all this in with the whole uh, ancient impact, uh, like the electric universe? <laughs> electric universe, ancient ancient impact theory, right? Yeah, dude, it's uh, the ether. It's, it's the, the ether. ether yeah. <laughs> I, I really like the uh, the, your, the the uh, electric universe idea. Like maybe uh, the whole different planetary alignments and everything, and causing <laughs> mass devastation throughout the planet, you know, uh, and on other planets. And, the, you know, if the whole, the whole Mars thing and, but these are all, I don't know if they're all, if it's all, I, 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 I like the, uh, you know, it's a wall Thornhill and, and, um, and David Talbot, you know, it, it, linking the correlation together basically of, you know, the 12,500 years ago, you know, it's just, these epic battles in the sky and the, these the god of, god of war and all this stuff that they were seeing in the skies back then being depicted in cave art across the entire planet the same pictures which is pretty wild it's curious that that number is like nearly half of the 26,000 year alleged cycle of whatever the yeah, great year going on yeah yeah i mean like all these numbers kind of fit inside each other mhm it is it's real interesting Oh, I thought of something. You you mentioned the uh, split in the, um, for, you know, the ancient aliens, non-corporal versus uh, flesh and blood gods. You know, same thing goes with aliens. That's kind of a the same split that's going on in the UFO community. You've got the people who think it's consciousness-based thing or interdimensional versus the nuts and bolts people. It's, you've kind of got the same dichotomy there. It's, but just, but we're talking about the exact same phenomena. I know it's a as above so below thing too because it's like sky you know the ships and the people that you're t- I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's just interesting. You it's know, the same pattern repeating over and over again. I mean, I just have to ask the question. It's like, well, did they really leave? You know, I don't think so. Good point. <laughs> I asked. You know, and, really and are we still interacting with these beings, whether they are? 
aliens, you know, with bodies and ships and these non corporeal beings, you know, at the same time, you know, has, has anything really changed, you know, because we have these stories of these extraterrestrial beings and the wars and this and that, but it doesn't mean that they were there every day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And who's to say that the Orion war story saga really, um, doesn't become mythology 10,000 years from now. You know, that's an interesting point. So you've got what will be myth along, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> spread by YouTube is now mythology in the future. Well, you know, I like to make the point that, you know, an archaeologist, you know, 5,000 years or 10,000 years down the road finds a junkyard in St. Louis somewhere and unearths a cup with a golden arch on it. And then yeah. another one. And then another one. Will he sit there and say that we worship the God of the golden arches and this cup had ritualistic purposes <laughs> tied to it? No, that's the Green Mermaid one. That's the one we worshipped. The Green Mermaid, oh, I the Starbucks. It was the Wendy one. Yeah, the oh. Wendy. <laughs> no, the Starbucks one. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. That. That I like find, they that. find that's this true. And, and that is true. <laughs> and that is a ritualistic <laughs> emblem. It is a they sigil, find this, for uh, lack this of a better word. piece of paper with the fish fillet written all over it. And shit. <laughs> Mermaids. <Yeah>. Styrofoam. <laughs> Fennel fish, yeah. we worship you. In a toaster. Like, what the? Yeah. yeah It'll probably the still be edible. Outlive, you know, all of us. It would be crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, back then, like you, you, you're talking like, what would be advanced technology? You know, then what would be, what would AI be back then? Would it be uh, the, uh, it was the creation of, of humans, right? That was the, the most advanced AI system right there. Well, so, if the gods were non-corporeal, yeah. it's, it's entirely possible that they were AI. <laughs> well, you know, if oh. the gods were non-corporeal, then there would be no way, in my opinion, that they would be able to come here and alter our DNA and do mm. anything. Correct. Well, you well know, how did so- you put that last time, last time, Grim, about like uh, if if something came from something why wouldn't that species have gone extinct or basically oh no i just said if we came from monkeys why are there still monkeys (laughs) (laughs) and why haven't any monkeys evolved yeah (laughs) but see but that kind of supports the whole genetic engineering Uh i just look at the dune bucks and go they had millions of years to be able to not lay on their backs (laughs) No. Yeah, no, I, I'm not. I'm not all in on evolution at all. I, you know, I totally get microevolution and small yeah. scale things. That with like the, the finches on yeah. the island, the whole Darwin thing. That's I get that. That's adaptation and survival versus evolution actually evolving. That's probably a pretty hard thing to do. Oh, it, it would have to man. take. Well, I mean, dude, that, we're not even talking about how DNA formed in the first place. Oh man! Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, like, I mean we're going to just take this inorganic material and then poof, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> Unless there's some sort of alchemy which we don't understand or know that can make it happen. Maybe it's possible that the DNA can spontaneously manifest to create life. The right conditions are there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not impossible. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but it hasn't ever improbable. happened. You know that we that found we know, other yeah. than. You know, four point however many billion years ago. Yeah, <laughs> there actually was a, an experiment uh, in the fifties, I believe. I, I forget the the science. No, it was in the sixties. I know which one you're talking. Yeah, about. the bubbling water and the brown liquid and stuff. That one. Yeah. But I and don't I thought, think they got past amino acids. I don't think they ever actually were able to create any kind of protein or any kind of organic reproducing life i think they only got to, to it to be i mean i i was very disappointed in that because i was a hardcore evolutionist at that yeah. point in time and i was like <laughs> man they figured it out and not so much not so much <laughs> hey, we're not done yet we can still figure it out <laughs> yeah yeah Maybe. well you know but kind of tied to that and this is just like in a totally left field area you know is we're talking about the development of humanity, but then there are things that are outside of humanity. And one of my personal favorites is domesticated animals. 
Now that's going to sound really weird, but all of the animals that Jerry knows mess- all about this. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. So, no, no, no. I don't. Me. I don't. I don't. Uh, he, but I know. I know. I am. I have the same thing. What? Yeah. Where did they come from? How did it happen? It's well, no. Yeah, but where it gets more interesting, and this is the part that fascinates me. So, all of the animals that were domesticated on the planet were domesticated between uh, 85, 8500 BC and twenty five hundred BC. So, somewhere between. 4,500 and 2,500. So as civilization started to take off, that was when the camel, the llama, and the horse were all domesticated. So those are all pack animals, animals of labor. Well, they just happened to conveniently be domesticated as civilization. And it wasn't just in one area. It was the camels in the Middle East. It yeah. was the horses somewhere else and the llamas in South America. It's like, hmm, that's pretty convenient. But this is the one that gets me the most. So Dog. animal domestication basically ended about 2,500 BC. So do you know how many animals since that time with our rise in technology have been domesticated? Five. Huh? Zero. Zero? A big fat zero. So we're so smart and our ancestors were so dumb, but they were able to achieve a feat that we have not been able to replicate. What about ferrets? They have ferrets back then? But ferrets are wild. (laughs) They're not domestic. (laughs) Just because you put them in a cage. (laughs) Don't buy alligators sitting on the couch. That is interesting. But yeah, that's interesting. How the hell did they domesticate cats, for instance? Oof. What the hell are cats anyway? They got slitty eyes. I think they're, they're like unholy, alien. Yeah, that was they like unholy they're unholy alien or reptiles and mammals. That's what they are. An unholy union of reptiles and mammals. <laughs> I like that. Yes. <laughs> uh, maybe. Why did Why did the Egyptians worship them? Yeah, <laughs> Cats are uh, un- un- unentangled observers in this plane. Mm-hmm. That's why they're always they, staring at the walls. Do my cat will just stare at the wall? I could see and stuff all the time. Things that I don't they, see. <laughs> past the visual. They're recording things the on the quantum level. Yeah, maybe. Pretty much, they're like the the owl cameras in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> the Incredibles. The owl cameras. Yeah. In the Incredibles, the owls were the cameras. Right. <laughs> well, it's like my dog has a, a little bit of a floaty eye. And so I used to say, that, you know, and so it would be like, burr, burr, burr. so she was the visual, and then the cats yeah. were the audio. Yeah. You, know, so. yeah. <laughs> yep. you always know where things are going on in your house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, have two, I have two cats, and they stare upstairs at, <laughs> yeah, <what's that laughs> at the dark <laughs> all night long. Like, what are you looking at? Something. Maybe there's an entity in your house, Jer. It's probably you. It could be creeping around my upstairs. <laughs> you never know. My, my, re- my remote viewing you. <laughs> it's your astral rape body. <laughs> oh, God. I ain't touching that one. No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Crusoe and Steak. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can, we can just do whatever. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. So, Rita, you are a clairvoyant. How did you figure that out? Yeah. Like, how did that come about? So when I, when I was younger, uh, very young, there was a TV series called The Sixth Sense who starred Gary Collins, who was a college professor who had ESP. Mm-hmm. And, at this, and, and so he would solve these mysteries, but they're always these like paranormal mysteries. And, and he would use his ESP. So it was like murder, she wrote except with a psychic twist. Right. So it was really cool. Except if you watch it now, it's totally dork. But <laughs> back in the day, it was really cool because it was just out there. And there was another uh, show, The Amazing Kreskin, who was a mentalist who had ESP. And so I decided that I wanted to learn how to be psychic <laughs> and just started reading books and reading books and reading books and reading and reading and reading, which is why I know so much crap because I've been doing this for <laughs> way too long. And, um, and never really thought I was getting psychic at all. And so many, many years later, I found the Berkeley Psychic Institute and started studying with them. 
and found out that I had actually been very psychic my whole life and never knew it. And so, isn't you know, that usually the norm though? Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you know, I believe that everyone has intuitive gifts, you know, some more than others. Apparently mine was fairly strong. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and nobody ever connected the dots for me, you know? And so that's one of the presentations that I give is to help people connect the dots with, this is what's going on in your life. And this is what you're experiencing. That is a psychic thing. You know, it's not a coincidence. It's not a synchronicity. It is a psychic thing. And so start listening to it and trusting it because actually, can I do a little plug? Yeah. Oh, plug away. Okay, definitely. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, there's a movie that is making the rounds around the United States. It's called PGS. Uh, Intuition is your personal guidance system. And it's going into select theaters around the country. And so like right now I'm working on getting it to Shreveport, which is near where I live. Um, it's going to be in New York City on like April 7th. But if they look up, I mean, they can see what the schedule is, but it's just like a one night thing. It's a new movie and I'm in it. <laughs> oh, that's Yay! awesome. It's, nice. it, it was really cool because, you know, apparently, okay, this is our secret, but apparently they <laughs> interviewed like 85 people and they had 26 people actually made it into the movie oh, and wow. I'm in it more than one time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Who did you beat out though? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I don't know, but the people that I'm in there with, mm -hmm. Caroline Miss, Judith Orloff, Norm Seeley, James Van Prag, uh, Mike or Michael Tamora, uh, people from uh, Thrive. The Thrive. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's like, and me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dean, oh, Dean Raiden? Oh, Dean Raiden's on there? Man. Dean Raiden, he's pretty yeah. cool. I like him. You got to get him on the show. Um, yeah. <clears throat> oh, uh, you were talking earlier about, uh, nah, never mind. I won't go there. <laughs> what was, never mind. Right. No, no, that probably is going to be really juicy. What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember what anchored this thought line of thinking. I think it had to do with the Eden generators that were the pyramids, right? And Eden if generators? that were true, but it was along those lines. We talked about something else after that, but it made me think of how we gave up our our creativity to to hollywood in a way right we we get our all our entertainment not necessarily from hollywood but from television movies sports we gave up our creativity to to have someone else be creative for us programming yeah in a way right yeah. mm -hmm. and it was more towards the thought of that we manifest our future by by visualizing it and, and moving forward right and that's all comes out of our creativity. And now that's all been direct. It's directed by large groups of people that and aren't it's scary. us. scary. And it's scary. And all the imagery coming out of there is leading us to manifest those futures. You know, I do, I do a weekly reading, planetary vibration reading, soulhealer.com. And mm -hmm. they're very short. They're like five minutes. And it just talks about where the energy is on the planet and how you may be experiencing it in oh. your life. Mm -hmm. And that was the topic of last week's reading. It was like, well, th things are getting a little bit better this week. And then it was this whole dissertation because I'd never really know what I'm going to write till I'm sitting in front of my keyboard. And right. sometimes I actually look at the cards and other times it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and that was my whole conversation was, you know, we're creating this reality. And if you look at movies, they're all about people standing in front of a, you know, 50 gallon metal drum, warming their hands because they're freaking homeless. Yeah. And, and, or and slasher movies. Yeah. I mean, it's a, just a very bleak future where if you go back to, you know, and I hate to say Star Trek, I'm a bit of a Trekkie, you know, it was okay. a much nice. more positive, yeah. <laughs> it was a much more positive vision of the future. 2001 Space Odyssey, a much more positive vision of the future. And it's like, what are we creating for ourselves? I mean, yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, you know, you can get into these movies, but what is it doing to our subconscious? What is it doing to what we're manifesting? And what is it teaching our children? 
you know, because people that grew up on Star Trek are the ones that built cell phones. And, you know, but Star Trek is just the psyop that was going on then, you mm. know, to bring you to manifest the space future in a way to get that belief uh. going. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, I can buy that, but it was at least it was more positive. Yeah, totally. Where, yeah, Roddenberry was a sweet guy, you know. But I mean, you look at the stuff like they just released that uh, altered carbons. Great yeah. show thing. Yeah, so we well, I thought it was disgusting. Yeah, it, to be honest with you, <laughs> because it degraded women. To know, Definitely. like, wait <laughs> yeah. a minute, we're like, how many years in the future? And we have all it's this stuff, and women, are, and, and women are still treated like a piece of shit. Yeah. Sorry. Women, uh, no, you say whatever uh, you want. <laughs> it was just the poor, though. I thought I didn't see women singled out in that show. Well, there was still, that I might not be sensitive of, to it. Uh, yeah, the, yeah the, the elite. Right. Right. I haven't watched it. I don't know. I thought it was cool. I read the book, so. Mm. Spoiler. No, I mean, it just had, you know, way too much exploitation, I felt, of women. Yeah. Oh, if you look, I, yeah, we were talking uh, about it, some some of the recent things we've been seeing on like yeah, Netflix, stuff like, and, and that is very prominent, like the exploitation of women. And um, just... Yeah, the, the but also the whole consciousness transfer idea. Con- yeah, and pedophilia. Like your, yeah, uh, women, you know, pedophilia, like pedophilia. all that shit is like all out there right now, and I don't know why they're trying to get people. Well, you could look at it; they're like conditioning yeah. people to get used to it, so they could, <laughs> you know, whatever, so they could make it legal, or at least they won't look. People won't look down on. I mean, right now, child porn is kind of that no go area for everybody, yeah. right? Mm. And if they can get it into the vernacular more and people just seeing it more, maybe it'll ease up. I mean, think about like pot, like nobody would have legalized pot 50 years ago. Right. Yeah. But by, you know, slow injecting, it's okay. It's okay. Whatever. That's a bad example, but you know what I mean? But it's still, ex- you know, I mean, especially with the child, child porn, it's like, yeah. but now you're exploiting these kids uh. in order to satisfy someone else's need or what they think they need or, what their disgusting. demon is telling them to do. Yeah, that kind uh, of thing. Yeah. Totally. There has to be, man. There has to be just some kind of evil entity attached to that. Like, I just, I, that's, oh, it's good. That's some of the darkest like fucking stuff ever. Makes me sick. It's not, like a, it's not like a ghost or something. It's just a force. It's well, maybe force. not a it could be, I don't know. <laughs> it's something. Force. Something bad that they're tapped into. It's no good. <laughs> the satanic hive mind. Ugh. <laughs> Well, you know, it, to me, it just says that we're not evolving. We're devolving, going, you know, into, oh, yeah, that's, you know, back to where we were before. That's, that's what I was going to ask you. Do, you. do you think being this, you know, how you're able to do the psychic, you know, do you think like that, as you were saying, obviously, we at one point, uh, everybody and everyone probably still can do this. Uh, able to connect you know via Mm -hmm. like yeah thought patterns and that kind of stuff and uh me being like a me me and more empathic like uh you know stuff like that um yeah i can always feel other people's energy and stuff it's crazy and uh but at one yeah talk about yeah going back to in that point in time where everything was connected and maybe information was being passed that way too. Like if you call, if you want to say a direct download, but just consciously like mm-hmm. um, shared. Well, I mean, when you look at, and I'm going to say animistic cultures, you yeah. know, so ones that have a lot of ritual or, you know, I'm even going to like throw Judaism and a more conservative Judaism into that category, even though I feel like it's, more modernized, more modernized, <laughs> um, you know, everything was a ritual, you know, and ritual is meditation, you know, and it's about clearing yourself. And the goal of many of them was in order to achieve that ecstatic state. And so when you're singing and when you're dancing and you're going around the, the fire in the circle, it's like 
you're clearing your space and you're making your, yourself more open to receiving that information that is out there that we're broadcasting all the time. You know, and so as we step away from all of this, we become less open and more susceptible to other people's influence because we're more in our head yeah. and not in our hearts. And the more that happens, the more disconnected from this animism we become. Yes. Well, we we're told it's wrong and we're told it's bad and it's evil. We're told it doesn't exist. Oh yeah. That part too. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. That part. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So what I would say like the easiest thing now is just, the only plus that I really like about the internet is this ability to connect and, uh, and meet people like you and, you know, and just, and, you know, we're all in different areas, you know, and, uh, it's just, that's the version of this global conscious right now, you know, and it's also being weaponized and used and through social media and all that, those aspects now, which is a lot worse, but it was released weaponized, dude. Y yeah. It, but I like the, yeah, I, I just, I always, me and Jerry, we all talk about the same thing. It just, it'd be so cool to go clear your minds and be able to go back and connect and stuff like that. But I mean, we can do it. And you can no. do it. Yeah. You can do it, but it takes a practice. Right. You know, people or who technology. <coughs> or, or a Montauk chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we're yeah we're we're in a couple different like remote viewing projects now we're trying yeah. stuff like that to open up and like and, and express those thoughts and and to depict them in these 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 targets and stuff and we're doing a couple of pretty legit uh projects with that right now we're doing uh the Renz is semi-official i mean he's gonna oh, publish yeah. the results but the other one is just for fun for on friday fun, nights but, every friday night we do like a remote viewing oh fun yeah. yeah, it's kind of cool. As years back, I learned about it, and then uh, and then our one of our, yeah our friend Ren Collier he he does a lot of uh, he's knowing a lot of work about it. He he drafted all the paperwork for it. It's all very official, and uh, so it's like once official. yeah once every two weeks, thirty minutes, sit down, remote view the target, and then six months from now we kind of go over i guess well, he's going to compile all the information or whatever it's a long project but each time it's a different target it, like every time we do it but it should be interesting and mm -hmm. see, see what happens but so we're kind of messing with that that's what's kind of cool about with that whole psyche you know phenomena you know the not even a phenomenon but that that whole ability to ap approach these things and uh and kind of see what different options help you like determine the outcome of these targets better. Maybe it's um, meditation. Maybe it's uh, I, I kind of like doing you know, like um, auto writing, you know, like where I'm, I'm writing it, not, not writing, but drawing and writing, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And some people might need uh, and like a low, you know, harmonic, you know, type of, thing to get you into these states because there's so much like background noise and stuff like that yeah like so when you do these readings that you do like are you able what's your like process on tapping into something like that like is it uh you can achieve that like instantly is it always there like i remember i think i've seen you saying like you can actually go in and i think you're, you're uh some of this stuff you're talking about um like this alternative healing, you know, like where you can actually pinpoint a uh, issue with somebody mm -hmm. and like, yeah. Like how does that work? Like, is it just a feeling you've always had? Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't again, no, didn't know actually, right, yeah. when I was studying at the Berkeley psychic Institute, um, we had to take some healing classes just as part of the program. And so there was a woman, and so the class would start, and we would have to do healings on each other just to practice, and then there would be a lecture part and maybe some exercises that we would do. And so for some reason, they always would have me work on this one woman who couldn't walk real well. Yeah. And, um, and so I would work on her, and so in my mind's eye, what I kept seeing were like these electrical wires that were cut. And they were like flying around and shorting and doing all this stuff. And 
So in my mind's eye, I was like putting them together and tightening them up and then taking electrical tape and wrapping them around the loose, uh, you know, where there wasn't any insulation and doing all of this stuff. Well, by the end of the eight weeks, she like the, to get into the main building, you had to go up like three or four stairs to get up on the porch to get in. But where the class was, was in a building in the back. And so she would just go to the back to go into the building because there weren't any stairs. Well, by the end of the eight weeks of this one particular class, she was actually able to walk up the stairs. Wow. <laughs> and so then what I found so, out well, was that- you rewiring all these things. Well, I didn't even know what I was doing. Yeah. You I didn't just... even know what I was doing. Well, then I found out that the woman had MS. Holy shit. <laughs> you know, and MS is where there are issues with the uh, myelin sheath that goes around the nerves. Yes. Yeah, and so, nerves, yeah. you know, so what I was doing was basically trying to heal that sheathing on the nerves, but I didn't even know what I was doing. And so, and actually I finished at Berkeley and would work with clients and I was always finding their health problems, you know, because you know, different people vibrate or receive inf different kinds of information. Like, I don't talk to dead people. Now, do they <laughs> show up sometimes and I talk to them sometimes, but for the most part, I don't talk to them. I don't want them coming to my house. Leave it to the necromancers. You, you don't know? need that attachment. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I, I'm I, scared of ghosts. Even though I did ghost hunting, I'm scared of ghosts and they can just freaking stay not by me. So that's my feeling on that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, being able to look into someone's body and come up with some whole long dissertation about what's going on with them, even if I have no clue what's going on with them, um, is very easy for me to do. And you know, so and so that's just like, you're like, yeah, this like this third eye, this mind's eye type thing, mm -hmm. basically. You're just mm -hmm. it's just there. It's all. Yeah. Like, wow. I, I call it x-ray vision. There you go. X-ray yeah. vision. <laughs> I, I love the bit you just break it down the basic like yeah i got x-ray vision you don't need all this mumbo jumbo shit that's right, right. <laughs> yeah that, that's hey i it. just try to keep it real you know hey that's what it's all about <laughs> yeah. hey that, that's perfect yeah that's hilarious hey. what uh so yeah you were talking but the healing you ever yeah, like uh i mean you're able to do it that way and then you ever heard of like like harmonic healing? Not, I mean, we were talking about Egypt and all that, but like, where uh, like frequency healing, yeah, uh, with the tuning, the the tuning rods and shit. How like, yeah, say there's like this aura around you, and you had neck, you 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 busted up your shoulder, or your back, like in back in '96, and it's been killing you ever since. I've heard people can like use these tuning like forks mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and go in and they and as these layers they're like tree rings right so like uh, along your life and they can find that specific like time frame when this trauma happened and then they can retune it and and fix that uh, like that makes i don't know but if you think about it we're all we're we are energy right and so yeah. when you're experiencing some kind of disease or issue whether it's emotional issue or a psychological yeah. issue it is at a very specific frequency and so for an example the emotion of love i mean this is how psychic stuff work the emotion of love vibrates at like 92.5 where the emotion of hate might vibrate at 71.3 okay you know and so each one has a frequency and so what psychic people are able to do is to tap into that frequency and go, okay, this is what I'm feeling. And now I can put a word to it. And so when you're doing like, I had a, actually, I'm not, I'm not an auditory person per se, yeah. but I had lost a, a dog who is, I was very attached to. And the only person that was around me at the time that I trusted because I'm very particular of who I'll let work on me. Um, was this woman who did tuning forks as part of her healing work, which I didn't even know that. Um, <laughs> I just went to her because I trusted her and she started doing all these tuning fork things. And I just was like laying on the table and I'm like, you just need to just clear your mind. And that's what I focused on was clearing my mind. And her comment to me was you almost vibrated off the table. 
<laughs> wow. wow. And I'm like, cool. Wow. <laughs> and I felt a lot better when we were done. You know, yeah. I mean, I it was, you know, she said that you were just going into harmony with the tuning forks. So I'm like, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. And you can feel it too when when that happens. You can feel when you're in harmony with it. Mm-hmm. You know, and you have the same thing with like the crystal bowls, you know, mm-hmm. or, yeah. binaural beats even sometimes mm-hmm. if they're at the right frequency. I can tune I can tune to many in a certain area. You know, and even crystals, you know, there are different properties and different vibrations in crystals and gemstones. And so that's why they are claimed to having healing properties is because they vibrate at a certain frequency or Oh, you should see my desk. I was just going to say, <laughs> I know you got a bunch I'm of... I'm in a hotel. Everywhere, right? I have limited <laughs> stuff with me. What's your favorite one? Me? Yeah. Your favorite crystal. or, or the, uh, Do you have well, a favorite? You know, I used to have this piece of rutilated quartz, but it has disappeared, which usually means it doesn't want me to have it. But I got... Um, well, the ghost took it. Shh. <laughs> 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 but I got does not this. want this in my house. Yeah. Well, actually, the house I'm in that does have two ghosts. <laughs> Told you. But yeah. they're but they're okay. Well, I mean, one's it, name it, is John, yeah. and so he's okay. He's very particular. It's like you know, I've been doing all this work restoring this house, and he's like, "Now you can't do that." He no, just I poked his head in a few minutes ago. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no 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 that 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 might be my late husband he shows up he yeah. shows up too yeah. i saw something i told <laughs> yeah. grim i told grim in chat i did oh. <laughs> it, was it good no it was just like a blur behind him like Whoa. wow yeah that would probably be him he was a little hammy <laughs> <laughs> wow he actually co-wrote that et chronicles book so mm, yeah okay. i can see him showing up um, but yeah, actually, ah. he's laughing at you, right? Um, but you know how there have been those images of like the extraterrestrial looking stuff that have been carved into ivory or whatever. So like I have this guy here. That you can oh, see wow. That, can't see. that looks like the tech paddle. From yeah, it's like that. As to, the like, flint, that's yeah. one of the flint shaped things. That, it's that, got all carved on the back. Well, yeah. no, want to know the creepy part? So they have that, the alien heads with the white mm-hmm. eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that fits right there. Oh, man. Yeah. But that's the exact Both shape right. of the, yeah, right the, the, the 1600 Flint story that you talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that thing is the shape of the devices that were thrown by the goddess. Huh. Was it Shipe? Shipe? I don't. I, I mean, I think it was bottle. like Sweet Lalique or I don't know. They all have different names. It's like X I P E. I don't remember now what it is. She and I yeah. have no. I have no phonic skills. She at all. Bump, pop, and well, so, I couldn't pronounce anthropomorphize. So but, you know, you got nothing to worry about. Oh yeah. Oh, no, it's like you know. I would interview. It's like well, the God of War because I can't say his name. But then I also got from the same guy this ring. Well, that's cool. which I think, and this ring is very powerful. So I like to, this is my new thing that I like hanging on to. What is that mm-hmm. stone? Cause I actually have the same stone in my pocket. I don't know. I, I mean, it's kind of red colored. Oh no. Oh, it's what red. Is that? Yeah. It's red colored, but it doesn't seem like Ruby, you know? So mm. I'm really not sure. Maybe a it piece blue, of Jasper. Right? And mm. It's red. Well, no, it's like a giant red eyeball. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. But it's got all carvings all on it too. Does it? What does it feel like when you wear it? Powerful. Yeah. You know, like it was some ruler person's. Lots of energy. Eyeball ring. Uh, mm, the saying. evil eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the evil eye. <laughs> I like Shazam better myself. <laughs> <laughs> Shazam. Shazam. Oh, Shazam. Sinbad. Oh, oh yeah, that was Shazam. that that was that Sinbad Sinbad movie back in the nineties where he was a genie. <laughs> Mandela effect. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. Oh. So you guys don't know. See, you guys are just babies. No, I, yeah, the original one. I, uh, <laughs> the original Shazam. So, no, that's the, the uh, original Shazam was these, and I haven't seen it in a million years. But it was a brother and a sister, or there was a guy and a girl, and they had these rings. And so to turn on their superpowers, they like clash the rings together, Shazam, and they transform. Oh yeah. man, that's like the Wonder Twins. Wonder Twin power yeah. activate. I remember that from DC's man. The the ambiguously gay duo is that no, how they do that? Starting to alive. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! I don't even. I'm trying to think. Oh, Jerry's Jerry's hotel <laughs> Wi-Fi <laughs> just died. <laughs> oh, yeah, and I'll just kind of talk, and you can think for a second. You oh. know, we were talking about alternative healing and yeah. stuff like that. You know, and those practices were used in antiquity and actually found a Sumerian reference to three different kinds of doctors they had. And don't ask me their names, but there was one who would identify what spirits or gods were after you that created the disease in the first place. Um, There was one god or one doctor who would use like, tarot cards or bone throwing to divine what was going on within you as to why you got ill. And then there was more the practical doctor who would set the bones or give you herbs to work with. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, and so wow. that, and so it was, and there were a lot of laws that surrounded it, especially the one that set the bones and gave you herbs, because if he messed up, you could basically sue him. And huh. so there's this whole body of laws that supported these doctors in their practice, you know, 5,000 years ago. Yeah. Oh, when did the bloodletting start? Oh, I think that that was, you know, much more recent. Now where they came up with that, I have absolutely. Oh, to to put the the, the whole young blood transfer, right? Well, no, if you, if you leeches or whatever, they have to make more. So yeah. if your blood is infected or tainted in some way, if you made more, it would be clean. That was the idea behind it. Yeah. Hmm. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it seems like medicine worked a whole lot better in antiquity than when you started going into more modern times, you know? Well, sure. The, the, I, the way I look at it is it, Big pharma, whatever, the medical industry, however you want to look at it, uh, wanted to control things. So they, they made copies of everything and, you know, trademarked and copyright wrote it. Like I, uh, Advil, right, is a, um, or aspirin, rather, is a bark from an African tree. White willow bark. Yeah. It was originally white willow bark. Which they couldn't obviously patent and own, right? Well, that's why they keep wanting to regulate herbal medicine, you know, mm-hmm. but they keep getting such an uproar mm-hmm. about it. But what was interesting, you know, they were trying to get uh, marijuana legalized, but then they're like, no, no, no. And then they came out with a pharmaceutical derivative. Yeah. The Marinol. Uh, yeah. And so Something's it's like, okay, so we're not going to let you like smoke a joint. You know, you can just buy this pharmaceutical stuff that probably would, you know, Fuck your brain up. <laughs> yeah. Based <laughs> with some other shit. Totally. But again, that they that they set the price for it's not taxed and you know, it's it's not weed. It's not weed. It's their product. Mm-hmm. That they can then get into the legal medicine system as prescription medicine. It's sick. <laughs> it's like that le- making plants illegal is crazy. It is really is. I never understood that. It grows out of the earth. <laughs> like how could it doesn't make sense. Why can't I collect rainwater? Same thing. It's like Oh, we, don't get me started on the rain. I know. Why yeah, can't you garden your house someplace? It's because because. And it's Yeah, like uh, it's our, not so much the whole genocidal elites doing it, it's more people doing it. It's people imposing that because they want their neighborhood to look nice. They don't want to garden in your your front yard and your subdivision, you know, and it's all a lot of it is from other people's bitchiness. <laughs> a lot of these laws come into place, these rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, back same with in the health segment idea of things. Um, like, what do you think about like GMO and genetic engineering and stuff like that? Do you think that has a huge role on what's happening with like the future of human in in the future outcome of humanity in the long run of genetic engineering? I mean, they don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. I, I, I think my favorite one is the the Frankenfish, where they took a salmon and an electric eel. <laughs> Let's make that. I'm serious. No, yeah. I'm serious. Yeah. Because it grew faster. I don't know. There were some qualities that were tied to this combination. And it's like, okay, so what are we doing to the gene pool? You know, we sit there and talk about the chimeras from antiquity. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, we're making our own chimeras uh-huh. now. And and we don't know what it's <clears> going to do. And God forbid something happens to the earth and all we have left is a bunch of Monsanto seeds. We oh, are my. so screwed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It Which kind story? of reminds me of the story yeah. of Atlantis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, well we know they have the seed vaults up in uh what is that like up in iceland Vault or like seven. up in the arctic yeah they have uh, the big seed Sweden vaults up there Norway, but it got robbed yeah. or went back i forgot something happened oh yeah something, something happened, happened yeah, yeah wasn't there a flood or <clears throat> yeah. well flooding because of global warming it just, <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> global warming yes. global warming is funny <laughs> well you know it was interesting i was looking at a temperature graph that went back, I don't know, 400,000 years. I mean, it went back really far in time. And I wish I could have gotten, it was just an an image. And so you couldn't really like zoom in on different things. And what was interesting is that temperatures went up from what would be considered normal and went Mm -hmm. way down and then went back up over its cycle consistently, consistently, consistently until that magic number about 12,500 years ago. <laughs> and it has stayed very consistent yeah. for a very full for 12,500 years. Yeah, the, the Holocene. It's the only time in that 400,000 year window that it's actually flatlined. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We've had the most, cons- <laughs> yeah, we've had the most sure. consistent, uh, weather just ever and it, it's crazy how they're they're worried about like a degree or two shift right now when it's yeah. like yeah the chart i've seen it. it's uh i think it's a lot of randall carlson's work that he does with the whole uh just going I back talks about it too yeah yeah it's it's insane because we're coming to an ice age it, i mean it's That's possible why i live in texas yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah you're in the right, right <laughs> spot right in the middle man it's yeah. just not getting as hot as it used to get there though mm-hmm it's pretty good. I don't know. It gets pretty hot. Cold. Yeah, I know. Not, you can't really. It's hard to tell the difference between 91 and 96. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's like 100, 100, you know, 57 days of over 100 degree temperature. Oh, man. It's brutal. It's unbearable. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> well, Vegas and, is and, worse, and I don't really have air conditioning, particularly in my house. So it oh, really. Yeah, it being a century home. Yeah, for sure. You don't have AC in there. Yeah. I'm like, oh. I'm, I'm cleansing I'm it's like a sauna yeah. thing you know that's, that's why you have that day porch or whatever you gotta that's right there. just so <laughs> good just, yeah hey yeah wow <laughs> and it's oh. not even a dry heat no where i live it's very <laughs> moist heat you sweat a lot mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's good for you mm-hmm. it is. well that's kind of my thought that's what like makes it be okay for me keeps the wrinkles away i think I like that idea, but <laughs> I have. You know, but we brain. had probably the coldest winter this year that I recall. And lots of snow too. in Texas. And I lots mean, of snow. There were a couple snowstorms down there. Well, just He's, one that I experienced. But I, th- uh, there were, I thought there was one in Houston and one later on in Dallas. It might have been the same one. Yeah, I think it was the same oh, one. Okay. I'm but like, um, well, but what ha- was interesting is that we had like almost an entire month where it barely cracked freezing, which is pretty abnormal for here. You know, it was like nine degrees and 11 degrees. Wow. You know, and, and during the day it would go up to like 27. I mean, it was just astronomically cold. Right. Here. It oh. makes me wonder if maybe 
that the poles aren't shifting. You know how the North Pole is kind of drifting south, southeasternly? Mm-hmm. What if the Earth is tilting instead of the pole moving? What if the pole is sta- stationary and the Earth is actually moving? But wouldn't we see ch- changes? I mean, I'm just throwing this out there in the day-night cycle. Not if it... Mm. Not if it turned in such a way that it was at the same aspect, same angle. I don't know. I don't know. It was just a thought I just had because that would definitely explain the cooler weather coming down if we were tipping away from the sun a little bit more, if that's even true, that the sun warms us. But, um, no, just a thought. Hmm. Well, unless you go with the John Uh, Lear theory and then, you know, the sun's electric. He's a nut job. (laughs) I do think it's electric, though, actually. (laughs) <laughs> if not okay. uh, I like some of those those ideas of, like well we talk about Jerry sometimes the sun being the opposite end of a black hole basically yeah, that's possible <laughs> the white hole it, uh, yeah, like, yeah like if all the energy is being pushed out the other side that's the outcome is is the sun because they talk about things passing through the sun you know and, right well the whole yeah. galactic federation folks always talk about how it's a stargate yeah, that that's actually what I was gonna ask. Maybe next, maybe what, maybe the last couple uh, questions here. But like, let's go off planet and then get 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 uh get kind of crazy with space and stuff. And maybe your thoughts and ideas on maybe what's out there to come. Uh, in in some of the interviews that you've had, like with some people digging up things and o- over the over the past few years. And, and do tell us what you think about Elon Musk's car in space. <laughs> oh, Rocket Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that that was kind of a interesting little promotional thing. Yeah. Um, I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it personally because it was like, okay, well, he did it. That's cool. I mean, I'm glad that someone is picking that up and trying That's to my, get it my thought face. on it. Yeah. You know, regardless of what he does. Right. Um, you know, I just want to know is he going to be able to keep that work up and get us through the Van Allen belt. That'll be interesting to find that out. Um, you know, but as far as like dealing with people with the galactic federation and all that stuff, <laughs> I don't go there and yeah. I don't interview people that that's their storyline or ones that communicate directly with people from Zeta reticuli. I, I don't interview that. I don't read it because we got enough issues here on yeah. Earth that we don't need to be like worrying about all that. Um, you know, there is so much going on. You know, with the world of politics, with what's we what we know or what we've been spoon fed. You yeah. know, we're having this whole conversation about our past, and there's so much that we don't know. The, and 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 then there's the question of how much is being kept from us or has been kept from us. Yeah. Um, you if know, anything. Or, well, there, but that's the thing. It's like, is it nothing or do we really go down this giant rabbit hole and have these reptilian overlords living in underground bases that are controlling the Bilderbergs who are controlling world governments that are controlling us with some ultimate agenda? You know, if, it's if you, like if you trim the alien portion off of that. You could totally go with an all or nothing on it. But I'm just taking it like to the ultimate rabbit hole pole, you know, yeah. and, and it's like and you can't say it's necessarily totally bullshit because, in my opinion, myth supports the concept of the reptilians living in underground bases, you know, and so it's like. You know, but there's all, you know, my my point is there's all of this material out there and what do you believe? And if I believe this, you know, if JFK was a conspiracy, if we didn't land on the moon, I mean, there are all these conspiracies, you know, chemtrails aren't real. Uh, That's the conspiracy or that's the anti-conspiracy? The anti-conspiracy. I was just being smart. Um, (laughs) They're definitely spraying something out there. Yeah. Or the phenomena that's the purpose of it is 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 not uh, purpose. Just what do you think they are? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think that they're jet exhaust. You think they're nefarious purposes? I mean, you know, I think we've all grown up seeing planes fly by 
You know, I used to live and not leave clouds and not leave and not leave, you know, like checkerboard patterns in the sky. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so what they're doing, I don't know. But if you take all of these things that are thrown into the conspiracy theory part and go, well, what if there's a stitch of truth to that? And then how much more is tied to it that we just don't even know? You know, 9-11, was that an inside job? You know, totally. I mean, there's just, totally was. there's just so much. And it's like, you know, so how much do you want to believe? And, and, but that, know, that's actually investigatable at this point. Well, and I understand, JFK. you know, and I understand that, but it's still, you know, this so huge amount of information that it's like, if they come and fess up to it, no one's going to believe them. Well, I think oh, people would yeah. believe them, but it would be overwhelming. It would be, you know, like war, war of the world. You oh, know, for not, not, well, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's. But maybe, maybe we are adult enough to handle it. What that we've been lied to our whole freaking lives. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Maybe, I maybe am. that's why because like, I already believe it. So I mean, it's, I already believe that I've been lied to my entire life. So but it seems like telling cons- me conspiracy theories are becoming more mainstream maybe they're slowly trying to get people to start thinking about this so when they do have some kind of big unveiling and all this shit does come out people aren't just floored because they've all heard a little bit of everything you know you they've heard it it's out there child porn well Well, you know what i don't even have an issue of whether it's true or not i guess where my bigger issue is is wait a minute i gave you my trust all of this time and and you've been freaking lying to me so Mm -hmm. what was your agenda and don't lie to me but i would have zero trust in anything you would have to say yeah yeah you're spot on we talk about that all the time like with this 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 stupid new york times stuff that they keep putting out with the to the stars academy you know like these these videos of uh flight data and stuff of chasing ufos and stuff and it's just like so yeah we've never trusted you the whole time but then everyone's supposed to to go along and be like yeah yeah, now it's uh, now it's cool but yeah, some, like, a, lot of people do. a lot of people are eating that stuff up. It's like uh, maybe it's like, it is for the untrained masses, you know, it may for be the like, nuts and bolts people. It was like, Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, to me, it looked like the air force tracking down Lockheed Martin crafts. <laughs> you know, yeah, it was, it was, that, that were, tech is out there for sure. Yeah. Dude. There's, yeah. there's no alien crafts with rivets. I, yeah. I think the, there's the, yeah, I think we've talked about it before. I'd like 99% of it is, everything a human's built and i think there's like the one percent of just unexplained shit you know like orbs stuff like that like that that seems kind of or they there's definitely in and out of dimension dimensional interdimensional type stuff there but, definitely seems to be a science to the whole anti-gravity tech the the electrogravitics yeah. that's yeah, that's, that's probably that's why they need that like that 200 million to build that ship that that to the stars wants to build right Oh, I don't know. That's yeah, that, that, and they have some secret, uh, not secret, but they have a piece of tech or whatever, or metal or some shit. I, mean, but I, I heard a good breakdown probably, of it the other day. It's probably something we've made. He's yeah, the it, little guy, right? Yeah, it's something that they already had and they made, but it's the slow drip of that stuff. And then, and then, therefore, Trump the other last week talks about space, space force. force. Yeah, space force. So, War May the space, space force right? be with you. Yeah, so probably for to get out there to start mining. mining I thought it was uh, interesting that coincided with the release of the Last Jedi on DVD. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it did. I mean, yeah. the space force stuff's pretty, pretty unique. But uh, there's pro- there's always been one. I mean, yeah, there's, two. there's yeah, Solar yeah. Warden and Solar the Warden, Warden, right? Yeah, the evil one. And the one where you go live 20 years on Mars and then you come back. Solar Warden. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 20 and back. 20 and back. Yeah. I'm mocking, by the way. I'm not. I know. A I know. I... I'm telling Dr. Rita. I'm, <laughs> I'm mocking all this. But. It could be real. Right. It exactly. It could be real. It could be. I leave <laughs> it you know, I mean, that. I mean like, it, you know, it goes along with like all the false flag stuff. Yeah. You know, which I think is interesting because I've interviewed Jim Fitzer multiple times. Oh, I got to tell you, I went to San Diego myself. And, <laughs> and, and YouTube has taken down every one of his videos. Wow. Did they take down Kerry Cassidy's from last week? Say that again. 
they take down Kerry Cassidy's video interview of him last from last week because he was all over Parkland and uh probably <laughs> probably that's it was amazing. actually pretty good. I mean, you know, he comes up with data, you know. Yeah. I mean, I just think that whole, well, the whole censorship thing that's going on right now, but it's kind of like, well, why do you have to shut down certain things if it's, if it's not true? Because they're not advertiser friendly. It's still up. Well, give it a little oh. bit of time. <laughs> the uh, I mean, it was interesting because I was looking for some uh, stuff on like Sandy Hook or Boston bombing and all of those false flag events the bulk of the YouTube videos are all gone. Yes, because a lot of those channels that were very vocal and had a lot of viewers got kicked off mm. because of that. And they're calling it, I mean, I, I understand. Going against community standards. Community, right, yeah. community guidelines and hate, not hate speech, bullying and harassment is what they call but, it. But if there's no not. bullying or harassment, I'm like, what He's is the bullying and harassment? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, just it's a room full of snowflakes and a, and a computer telling them what to do, basically. Oh, this is well, then they just have to hire people again to go over the data because the algos were were just picking yeah. so much stuff, right? Yeah, like, no, but, even the first if pass. Have them, but even if you have them review it, they still come back and say it uh, violates. That doesn't meet. Yeah, that's the room full of snowflakes. <laughs> <coughs> oh, this world. You know, but what? But what if those are true? What if you know parents or people that were part of 9-11, you mm -hmm. know, that lost family members find out that it was the government that set them up for the whole thing. Oh. You know what I mean? I don't think it like, was the government per se. It was elements within the government. Still, you know, shit flows downhill. It would go, yeah, I agree. It I agree. Mm -hmm. That same place. But what about like Obama spying on Trump? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for the indictments myself. Personally. Me too. <laughs> Horowitz's, Horowitz's report is coming out soon. It's going to be the linchpin. If if you can feel the energy building, which you probably have been feeling for a few weeks, that's what it's coming to. I think that the release of that report and all the that's I can see I can see the Democrats are flailing about trying to do anything. Like they brought out this Cambridge Analytic thing against Trump that he used it, but actually Obama hired them <laughs> to do all this stuff on Facebook. <laughs> well, and the, it's and having that story come out has killed mm -hmm. Facebook as we oh know. yeah it's crushing them now mm -hmm. yeah yeah which is just a front for like a CIA database I think mm -hmm. yeah. and through your information it goes right to ours here do this survey yes, yes yeah. exactly survey. upload a picture yeah. of your mom find upload out what personality you type you are you know all that kind of stuff <laughs> I mean funny. I think it's scary you upload a picture and it tags everybody in it that's mm -hmm. weird yeah that's yeah, quick. See, I, st I, I, I had Facebook for one year when it first came out. Then I've been off of it. I canceled that off of it the entire time. So just basically right when I got in contact with you on it, because I started up one for the show, because we're, we're fairly, our show is fairly new. We're, we're about like 30 or 40, up, almost 40 now, I think. Yeah, something like, like that. I think this is our 40th episode. Hey. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, we we kind of like we, we kind of circle with a lot of the same uh shows and stuff you've been on, but but do, yeah but so d doing the rounds of the these shows i've definitely i've heard of you before and we're very grateful for you to come hang with us well this was fun yeah, yeah. that's that's kind of what happens it's time to cut uh people get to cut loose uh you know to share some memories, share some thoughts and everyone, you know, it's just neutral ground. You know, we're not pushing anything. It's all about just having a, a great conversation and spreading positivity. Try not to go down too deep and in, into the, I call them black rabbit holes, man. You get sucked down in these things. Dude, and it's just like pointless. You're talking about putting negative energy towards something, you know, it's like, it, it sucks, you know, and, uh, but they are kind of fascinating. Oh, uh, well, it, it's knowledge, you know, and it is, it's in, we've always been, I guess, in this search and this quest and this thirst for knowledge. And I think we're all life path sevens. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, and after, after being into this stuff for so long, I remember just like reaching a point to being like, I, I guess I'm done. I don't know. You know? And then, uh, and then about a year span of where I was just kind of, 
didn't know what to do. You listen, yeah, me and Jerry, me, I've known Jerry for a few, like three, four years now. We used to frequent like, like the fade to black and stuff like that. And it just was the same stuff over and over and over and over. And we were just done. And then, then I don't know, we all kind of re-met and re-integrated. And um, I think it's all about consciousness and coming together and, uh, and, and going back to your roots of having open-minded conversations about things and, and it's okay to question things and it's okay to, to go down these things sometimes and, and, and try to figure some stuff out. We're not, we're not saying anything is anything, but, but having people like you on at least can construct, like, at least for me, construct my thoughts of ancient in the past and, and gathering that knowledge and, and stored it up in the sponge in my head. Yeah, it's great to get clarity on areas yeah, it really of knowledge is. that you have very, you know, it, you formed this opinion about like, oh, that's interesting. But it's but it's like it and then you're the way you do it of like making it so easy to just take this part and be like, yeah, this is what it was and this is what it is and done the, all that work and I'm so uh, yeah, and for people like you, I thank you for 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 sure. Yes, from the thank of my you. Heart. It's been oh, so great you. to uh, talk to you. Thank you. And I appreciate yeah. thank you. You know, and I just want to put out, you know, like the way it comes out of me is like here, blah. but <laughs> yeah. there are, you know, I don't even know how many countless hours of research yeah. to back it up, back up, you know, most of the stuff that I say, um, because one of the things that irritates me the most are people that just pull shit out their ass and don't just yeah. say, well, mm -hmm. I don't really know, but here, I'm just going to make this up on the fly no yeah exactly. I, I totally agree it, like, because i'm my patreon people want it yeah. <laughs> my patreon want me to make this up <laughs> right 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 going yeah yeah that's right uh, gotta feed that beast no doubt All right. yeah. <laughs> well yeah well where can everybody find you if you want to just plug plug some things uh dr rita sure um, I mean, the best place is for people to go to my primary website, which is soulhealer.com, S-O-U-L-H-E-A-L-E-R.com. You can find my books, articles. Uh, you can subscribe to my newsletter. There's information about that film um, on there. Um, or you can friend me, Dr. Rita Louise, not Rita Louise, but Dr. Rita Louise on Facebook. Um, and you can get my weekly psychic readings nice do you have do you, do you do do you do conferences do you do the, the rounds on those at all really like uh well like, i uh, would contact in the desert stuff like that you know? we should I have would. her come to our conference contact your cabin <laughs> oh geez, yeah <laughs> we're having one in may we're doing one in may yeah we have a group of uh well i sadly can't make it but uh there's a group of like podcasters and shows and all this stuff they're all doing this meetup in may up in um northern uh oregon oregon yeah see i never get invited to anything <laughs> all this information yeah i would say good hair but they can't see that <laughs> you know it's like yeah i never <laughs> get it we've yeah. tossed around the the idea of putting together some kind of conference with actual real people with real information totally i would much rather go to something like yeah. that <laughs> yeah it's it's hard to organize and finance mainly mm -hmm. yeah right we're just working stiffs you know yep. <laughs> like yeah. the rest of it it's those yeah. reptilians giving us information and knowledge yes it is just working stiffs <laughs> <laughs> do, reptilians lay, do, rep do reptilians lay eggs Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yes, they're <laughs> like, the man that way. <laughs> I don't know if all reptilians. Are, yeah, I guess they are. <sighs> you know, one thought I had about reptilians that we were would hatched. be possible if if some of the dinosaurs survived. Oh uh, yeah. Oh. Right, they could evolve if an evolution is true. <laughs> Alligators, you, uh, crocodiles. Yeah, you brought their pets, and they were dinosaurs. I don't know. I'm just saying there could be underground reptoids somewhere that. Yeah. Well, I dinosaurs. mean, there are people that have put that. Like Betsy Lewis, I think, wrote a book on that topic of mm. whether they, you know, didn't all die off, but it got yeah. too cold because of the ice age. So they went to warmer areas and they went into the underground and Ooh, and evolved. And, and, and again, possibility. Right. Hello absolutely. Earth. Uh, yeah. Like everything's true. Probably everything. Just everything. every storyline. It's just a different dimension or timeline or something. Because oh, yeah. we always ask somebody because uh, magic or whatever. 
<laughs> Antarctica. Do you know anything about Antarctica? I mean, other than they think they found those pyramids there and there yeah. might be a ship down there and yeah. Same old stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nobody will know until another Stargate. I, li- yeah, I yeah, like Stargate. Walter Bosley's type. What he says about it, that uh, his mentor told him that when he was there, they saw very large machinery. That's well, all you saw. know, depending on how far back in time you go with some of this stuff, it's like it could have been a warm tropical environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there are some people that have yes, suggested yes. that um, Atlantis wasn't in the Atlantis, that or Atlantic, that it was actually uh, Antarctica. Antarctica. You know, and, which, if you believe William, uh, Admiral Byrd's story. It but I was, thought that was North Pole. That nope. That was Antarctica. Oh, Bird did the tri- Arctic trip. Yeah. Operation High Jump, I think. Yeah. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's cold down there. Don't go. <laughs> well, thank you. It was very nice meeting you. Yes. Thank nice you. Meeting you. Nice meeting you too. Thank Thanks you. for having me on the show, guys. All right. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I'd love to do this Take again. Care. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.